Okay, very well. Good evening. Tonight's Committee of Adjustment hearing is being held by video conference and live streaming video on the town's live stream webpage at oakville.ca. This is a hearing to consider applications for minor variance and consents held under the authority of the Planning Act. Please keep in mind the intent of the to review the application that is before the committee, listen to the evidence, and then make a decision. This process is not intended to be used to resolve any concerns or disputes that may exist between the town, individuals, or organizations. If a request for a deferral is made, the committee and the committee grants such a request, the applicant or authorized agent must contact the secretary treasurer to schedule a new hearing date. In order to conduct an effective and efficient electronic hearing, we have adopted the following process. If you are watching the live stream of this hearing on oakville.ca, and if you wish to speak to an item on the agenda, you can call 905-815-6095. Again, the number is 905-815-6095. The number will also be posted uh, on the live stream page at oakville.ca. Staff will be standing by to take your call. When you call in, staff will ask for your name and item number that you wish to address. You are also asked to provide your address for the record. And then you will be provided with further instructions to join the video conference. When the chair of the committee polls for interested parties, the secretary treasurer will unmute you when it is your time to speak. The applicant or agent will be given the opportunity to briefly explain to the committee the basis of the application and answer any questions that may arise. A maximum of five minutes will be provided for a presentation. You will need to state your full name and address for the record. Any submissions beyond the five minutes will be at the discretion of the committee. All delegations must state their full name and address for the record. A maximum of five minutes will be provided to make your presentation. All remarks and questions will be directed to the chair and any submissions beyond the five minutes will be at the discretion of the committee. The applicant or agent will then be provided with a further five minutes to respond to the comments made by the interested parties and answer any questions from the com committee members. If the applicant or agent has any concerns found in staff report, particularly with any proposed conditions, this will be the opportunity to advise us. The matter will then be taken into committee for a decision, and this will mark the end of all discussion. Any person desiring a notice of the decision for an application must provide a written request, preferably through email to the secretary treasurer. Only applicants, specified persons, and public bodies may appeal decisions in respect of applications for minor variants and consents to the Ontario Land Tribunal. A notice of appeal may not be filed by any other individual person or unincorporated association or group. Written notice of the committee's decision will be mailed no later than 10 days for minor variants and 15 days for consents to the applicant and or agent and any other person who filed a written request for such notice. If you do not agree with the committee's decision, the applicant, specified persons, or public bodies may appeal this to the Ontario Land Tribunal. The last day to appeal the decision to the Ontario Land Tribunal will be noted on the decision. If no appeal is received within the prescribed time frame, the decision of the committee becomes final and binding. The secretary treasurer will then notify the applicant and anyone who received a copy of the decision through written correspondence. People participating in the hearing are to be courteous to and respectful of the members of the committee, town staff, and the other people participating in the electronic hearing. Tonight's electronic hearing is being video recorded and available for future viewing at oakville.ca. Thank you. Now, uh, we have no... Uh, at this time, I'll take declarations of security interests. I see none, thank you. Requests for deferral or withdrawal of applications. This is the time if you would like some more time with your application or further discussions, um, you can request a deferral or withdrawal of your application. Um, I will warn the attendees of this meeting today that given the 
number of applications that we have on our roster. If you intend on getting a deferral, you do need to request it at this present time. We cannot hear applications and then having gone through the application, then grant a deferral. So all those who are, are contemplating a deferral, this would be the time to do so. If you could just Madam ask Secretary them. Treasurer, Treasurer, if yeah. anyone is in the audience who has raised their hand uh, at this time, can you please invite them in? Okay, I've, mo I've moved Mr. Kieran into the meeting. Very well, uh, Mr. Kieran. Good evening. Madam Good Chair, evening, Mr. Kieran. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee, I am uh, requesting a deferral for the application that uh, I had on this evening. It's CAVA 038-2023. That's at 248 Gloucester Avenue. Okay, this is two. To address uh, staff comments that we receive. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Kieran. Um, members, I'm in your hands. Uh, all those in support of a deferral to further discussions with the uh, town staff. All those in support. Very well. Your application has been deferred. Thank you, Mr. Kieran. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other requests for deferral? Uh, yes, it'll just take me a moment to move them into the meeting. Okay, very well. Sorry, I'm just having a technical issue trying to move them in. I'll just take a moment. That's fine. I'd move Mr. Kloss into the meeting. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Uh, I'm Steve Kloss, planning with Glen Schneider and Associates. And I'm the agent for Nira Vanity Patel, the owners of 1163 Lindbrook Road. So this is for item 6.3, which is CAV A40-2023. And uh, we're requesting deferral in wake of the staff report. We, we'd like to work with staff to uh, come back to the committee with a version of the application that everybody's happy with. Very good. That's what we like to hear. Um, all those in favor of a deferral. Okay, the application has been deferred. You'll see the secretary treasurer when you can. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. I've moved uh, Matthew Rabot into the meeting. Hi, my name is Matthew Rabot. I'm asking for deferral for application CAVA 123-2022 for 518 Taplow Crescent. Sorry, Mr. Rebo, can I first uh, put your camera on if possible? 
And then uh, second, I'd like you to repeat the application that you're here for, CAV. Yeah, it's Matthew Rivo and application number CAV A123-2022 with 518 Capital Crescent. Okay, you are, yeah, 6.8, okay. But yeah, 6.8, correct. I'm also 6.9. <laughs> Okay, you're requesting a referral for the 518 Taplo Crescent though, right? Yes, okay. So just and one time to work with planning staff. Very well. Mr. Tolowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I believe the notice on this house was posted up on the front porch where it was not readable from the street. So I just want to make sure the applicant knows when they come back that that notice must be up at the street where it can be read from the street line. Yes, thank you, Mr. Tulaski. I had called in on that one as well, and I believe the Secretary Treasurer did notify you, correct? Yes, we acknowledge the comments and we'll make sure that the sign is posted closer to the street. Very well, thank you. Um, all those in support of a deferral, Okay, the application has been deferred. You'll see the secretary treasurer when you are able. Thank you. Thank you. Are you still working on some of the yeah, I've moved oh, Mr. Yeah, I've moved um, Mr. Castillo into the meeting. I've moved Mr. Castillo into the meeting. Um, I, I don't see him on my screen. I'm, I'm waiting to hear. Mr. Castillo, uh -huh. if you are, if you hear us, yeah, you, thank you. You need to unmute yourself and put your camera on. Hello, sorry. I'm the actual uh, client, uh, the owner of the property. I think I logged into uh, Mr. Castillo's uh, um, link by, instead of my link by accident. I'm that, Patrick. That, sorry, which application are you here for? Uh, 401 Wedgwood Drive. Just I, I'm not uh, oh. I'm not Gerardo Castillo. I'm Patrick Shallow. So let me just call him because I think I might have just bumped him out. Sorry about that. That's okay. Are you requesting a deferral, sir? No. No. Okay. Uh, uh, sit tight. We still haven't gotten to uh, the uh, items on the agenda yet. We're still taking deferrals. So, so you can you do can what you need, need to do uh, in the meantime. Okay, sorry about that, thanks. No, no worries. Okay, sorry. Um, Ms. McCray, okay. is there anyone else waiting for a deferral? Uh, there doesn't seem to be anyone else waiting for a deferral. Okay. I'm assuming that everyone who is... Uh, still in the meeting is looking to have their application heard. There are no more deferrals. No, I do not see any other hands raised for deferrals. Okay, very well. We will start the meeting with the first item on our agenda. And I move Mr. Demchek into the meeting. It's, uh, we have a first, the consent application, and that's uh, B2301 at 307 Chartwell Road. 
Good evening, Mr. Demchuk. Uh, good evening, members of the committee. Um, I have prepared a brief presentation. Okay, great. Yes, it's up on the screen um, just for uh, this evening's meeting. Um, for the purposes of the presentation, I will be speaking um, to both the consent and minor variance applications um, for the purpose of the presentation. Um, so yes, my name is Paul Demchek um, of Batory Management. I am the planning consultant on behalf of the applicant for 307 Charter Road in Oakville. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so the subject site uh, measures approximately just over 4,500 square meters. Um, it's an interior lot uh, with 49.17 uh, meters of frontage along Chartwell Road. And the site is currently vacant um, and features an existing circular driveway um, at the frontage of the property that you can kind of see on this aerial photo, um, as well as a number of border trees uh, that are located around the site. Uh, next slide, please. So the purpose of the application uh, this evening is to sever the property to create one new residential lot and one retained lot uh, with frontages uh, obviously on Chartwell Road. Um, the landowner further seeks to construct a new detached dwelling on each of the retained and severed lots. And there is also road widening uh, that is noted on part one of this severance sketch. Uh, that road widening obviously will be dedicated to the town of Oakville. Next slide, please. So this is a site plan of uh, the proposed uh, dwellings. Um, so the applicant is looking at, um, for each of the dwellings, to, to obviously construct two dwellings um, on the properties. Um, it's intended that the um, built form of the dwellings is to fully comply with the requirements of the zoning bylaw. So obviously this includes all required setbacks, height coverage, and all other applicable uh, build form standards that exist within the zoning bylaw. Um, as part of the road widening, as part of the road widening request, um, I will note that there are a number of trees that will be um, that are located right now, but will be within the future ownership of the town of Oakville. And this is shown on the site plan um, once the uh, the severance is complete. Um, and the retention of these trees has been considered uh, carefully within the design. So the southern lot will retain the existing driveway entrance to ensure that uh, the trees at this frontage are protected. And the northern lot will utilize a new driveway entrance uh, that's better suited um, in between two existing um, trees to ensure that no impacts to the right-of-way trees or border trees are uh, negatively impacted. I also note that just generally the front yard setbacks are also designed to be uh, aligned um, with the adjacent properties. Uh, next slide, please. Um, this is a rendering of the dwellings uh, that's shown on the current slide. Um, the architecture and placement of the dwellings um, has obviously uh, been carefully considered um, given the nature of, of Chartwell Road and, and the fabric of, of lots within this community. The height of the dwellings are under nine meters and each of the dwellings has a lot coverage of approximately 13%, uh, uh, which is well under the requirements of the zoning bylaw. Next slide, please. The official plan designation of the property is low density residential, which includes the special policy overlay. Um, the special policy overlay in particular um, includes um, um, large lot characteristics, uh, which were carefully considered in the analysis of, of this application. Um, those details um, and analysis were provided within the submitted uh, planning rationale. Next slide, please. Uh, the subject site is zoned uh, RL1 O suffix zone. As noted, uh, no variances are required for the proposed dwellings. However, a single variance uh, to the requested lot frontage um, noted in the zoning bylaw is required to support the proposed consent this evening. Next slide. So the variance for each of the um, properties is a reduction to the lot frontage to permit uh, 24.62 meters of lot frontage for each respective lot, whereas the zoning bylaw requires a minimum frontage of 30.5 meters. Next slide, please. Um, so in support of the um, consent application, and obviously this ties into the, uh, the minor variance analysis, um, and this was further outlined within the planning rationale, but an analysis of the immediate neighborhood context 
and lot fabric was completed um, and an outline of these lots that were studied are outlined in yellow um, as noted on the screen. So the immediate context um, that was defined is bound um, to the east and west side of Chartwell Road, uh, Morrison Creek to the north and Chartwell Church uh, to the south with the subject site uh, generally located in the middle of, uh, of this um, study area. So a total of 37 lots were analyzed within uh, the study area that's before um, on the screen right now. Um, so I will note that the site has one of the largest lot frontages and lot area within this immediate neighborhood and study area, again with a frontage of 49.17 meters and a lot area of over 4,500 square meters. So notwithstanding the road winding provided along Chartwell Road, um, and that was shown on the draft reference plan, the proposed lots, um, the remaining developable lands maintain a frontage and lot area that is sizable relative to the immediate context. Um, so again, I will note that the proposed severance plan includes uh, frontages that are 24.62 meters for each respective lot. And each lot has um, an area of over 2,200 square meters. Um, just as a quick summary from the data that was taken in this study. So 19 of the 37 lots that were studied or 51% have a lot frontage that is less than the required 30.5 meter frontage noted in the zoning bylaw. Uh, further, the proposed lots for um, parts two and three um, are greater in frontage than six of the lots within the uh, study area. And the proposed lot area uh, for the proposed lots are uh, greater than 26 of the 39 lots within the immediate uh, study area. It is also worthwhile noting that the proposed lot frontage um, is greater in frontage than the existing adjacent property to the north at 317 Chartwell Road. Um, and again, notwithstanding the significant variation of lot frontages that obviously do exist within the immediate neighborhood. Um, just in terms of obviously the um, Going back to the variance and the intent of the zoning, the intent of obviously the minimum lot frontage is to ensure that the general pattern and character of lots within a given neighborhood is maintained. Um, and as I've just outlined, um, the existing lot frontages within the immediate uh, neighborhood vary considerably um, based on the analysis um, that was also submitted within the planning rationale. Um, it's my opinion the proposed lots are compatible with the character of lots uh, located on the east side of Chartwell Road and the proposed variances will, uh, will not negatively impact the existing neighborhood lot fabric. And the variances also represent a frontage that is observed within the neighborhood uh, fabric. Um, as such, I would recommend to the committee that the proposed um, application uh, does meet the forecast of the Planning Act and the consent application does represent uh, good planning. Um, that's the summary of my presentation and I'm before the committee and would be happy to assist and answer any questions. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you, Mr. Demchuk. If there's anyone in the audience who has uh, interest in this um, application and would like to speak to the matter, please raise your hand. Uh, at this time, are there any questions or items of clarification of Mr. Demchuk uh, from the committee members? Okay, I see none. Um, if there's no one who's had interest uh, in the application that has raised their hand to speak, we'll take the matter into committee. Uh, we'll deal with the consent first, and then we will deal with the uh, variance um, attached to each parcel. Who would like to move a motion? Mr. Talalski, thank you. Go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I'll move approval of this consent, finding it complies with Section 5342 of the Planning Act, that uh, no plan of subdivision is required, and that the lots are consistent with the lots within the neighborhood. And I would make that approval subject to the conditions attached in Appendix A. Very well, thank you. Is there a discussion <clears throat> on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay, the application has been approved, none opposed. Following up on that, Madam Chair, I would move that CAVA 009 of 2023 be approved, finding that it meets four tests of the Planning Act. Again, I 
find that the lots being created are consistent with the lotting in the neighborhood and don't see that there will be an impact um, from the reduced frontage. I would make that approval conditional on the um, certificate of official being issued for the consent of B2301 and that uh, the approval expires within two years if the certificate of official for B2301, I guess it's bracket 610, has not issued. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Tlowski. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay, the application has been approved. Thank you, members. Uh, there's still one more item. One more to go. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless you don't want that one, Mr. Demchek. I'm going to cross my fingers for the next one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chair, I'm going to move that CAVA 010 of 2023 be approved as applied for, finding it meets the test of the Planning Act. Again, finding no impact from the reduced variance and the reduced front yard setback as it's consistent with the neighborhood. I'd make that approval subject to consent B2301 bracket 610 be approved, which it has been, and that the certificate of official is issued and that the approval expires within two years if the Certificate of Official for B2301, bracket 610, has not issued. Thank you, Mr. Talowski. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay, the application has been approved. None opposed. Thank you, Mr. Demchak. Thank you, members. Have a great evening. You as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, application CAV 410 Wedgwood Drive. Uh, that's CAV 039 of 2023 at 410 Wedgwood Drive. If you're interested in speaking to this application, please call 905-815-6095. Staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instructions to join the video conference. I'm hoping Mr. Shallow has uh, figured out the uh, link and that Mr. Gerardo Castillo is now on hand. Well, I've moved the name, Mr. Castillo, into the meeting. I'm not sure. Okay. Hopefully, it'll be we'll the right person. Good Hi. evening. Good evening. How are you doing? Good. Thank Good evening, you. Uh, How are you? Good are you? Good evening, uh, members of the committee. My name is uh, Gerardo Castillo uh, from Keystone Home Designs. Um, I'm the agent and the home designer for Mr. Patrick Shallow. And uh, we're here to uh, request um, a, a minor variance for uh, an extension of a lot coverage that was actually previously approved last year in August of 2022. Uh, we currently have a building permit in hand and they're ready to start construction really soon. But after reviewing the, the layout and the design with the, with the homeowner, um, he realized that he needed a little bit of extra space uh, at the back of the garage to extend the mudroom and a little washroom to serve the, the pool. Um, so we currently have a small uh, porch at the back and some unusable space behind the, the, the garage. So we just added that extra square footage, uh, which is less than 1% than of what we added last, last year. Uh, so instead of 27.32, we're going to go to 28.28, uh, which is about 10, less than 10 and a half square meters. Um, you, in, in the letter that you guys send us, you have a very good uh, uh, schematic showing the two side plans, the previously approved and the new one, that you can actually see exactly what we're doing. Um, the one you have in front of you is the newest one. So behind the garage, as you can see, is just a straight uh, box that we filled in. Of, uh, again, it was like a nine and a half by 11 foot square. But if um, if you need to, you, you can go to the, um, put on the screen, the, the letter that you send us with, with the comments, and you can compare the two, the two, uh, the two different uh, side plans. Uh, again, this, this small addition, as you can see with the comments, it doesn't uh, have any view from the street, so it doesn't affect the mass of the building um, in any way. 
um, again, it's just a small addition towards the back uh, that we should have included on the previous. But, uh, we had a little cabana at the back that we, we thought we can serve, you know, with, with a washroom and everything, but uh, it's very small and the equipment and storage is just, and, and, the, and the location of it doesn't really help with the plumbing. So uh, we decided to let this. Um, uh, if you have any questions or if you can refer to the rest of the drawings, you can probably see better what we can do here. Very well, thank you, Mr. Castillo. Are there any um, items of clarifications or questions of Mr. Castillo at this time? Okay, I see none. Um, has anyone called in for this matter, Madam Secretary Treasurer? Uh, there's no one at this time. Oh, sorry. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. I guess the homeowner wants to be moved into the meeting because it's someone with the very same name. He's got their hand up. So just one moment and I'll move them in. Sure. Sorry, now they're gone, or they don't have oh, their right. hand up. <laughs> Mr. Castillo, are you expecting uh, Mr. Mr. Shaw to speak at this meeting? No, no, we'll use the because I just gave him my link connect. Okay, so, so we can proceed? Okay, very well. Then we'll take the matter into committee. Go ahead, Mr. Flemington. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Having uh, conducted my site visit, as well as having reviewed the applicant's written submission, uh, also noting that the town's written staff report is in support of the application and also taking into account the comments presented by the applicant's agent this evening, noting that there were no oral or written objections for this application. Um, I do agree with the comments made in the town staff report, find that it's uh, minor in nature and meets uh, the test of the planning act. So I'm prepared to move a motion in favor of uh, supporting the application as applied for uh, with the following two variances. Uh, the first one being that the dwelling be constructed in general accordance with the submitted site plan dated January 16th, 2023 and elevation drawings dated January 18th, 2023. And secondly, our condition that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. Very well, thank you, Mr. Flemington. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none, all those in support. Okay, the application has been approved, none opposed. Thank you, good evening. Application CAV 041 of 2023 at 1123 Morrison Heights Drive. Again, this is application CAV 041 of 2023 at 1123 Morrison Heights Drive. I have uh, two emails of opposition, Mr. John Corker and uh, Rachel and James Williams. Um, if you are interested in speaking, 905-815-6095. Again, the number is 905-815-6095. Staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instructions to join the video conference. We have Mr. Paul Cronus. Okay, is, is any, if they could please raise their hand if they would like to be moved into the meeting. Okay, I've moved Mr. Cronus into the meeting. There we go. Hello, Mr. Cronus. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Um, thank you very much. Uh, um, my name, as you know, is Paul Cronus. 
and I'm a land use planner at the offices of Weir and Folds. I'm the agent and applicant on behalf of the owners at 1123 Morrison Heights Drive. Um, I know there is a staff report uh, in support of the three variances, um, and not in support of three, in support of one. I'm prepared to give you a full presentation to give you my sort of explanation and uh, rebuttal that uh, for your benefit. So should I proceed? I'm hoping I can keep it under five minutes. Uh, if I go over, I'll stop and I'll ask for your indulgence for a bit more time to finish, but um, I'll proceed. Um, so uh, I want to, uh, in my submission, I'll speak to some of the uh, differences I have with the planning staff report and also briefly speak to the two public submissions you made reference to. So just uh, as a starter, before I filed the application, I had the benefit of uh, reaching out to Ms. Catherine uh, Buckerfield, who was a planner at the town way back on July 20th, 2022, where uh, we presented a set of uh, initial plans and engaged in the discussion. Uh, it's not, as you know, the town's practice to give you direction on what they may or may not support. It's up to you to try to determine that. Uh, we had uh, the four variances that you have before you today, plus one additional dealing with the uh, residential floor area. Uh, and as a result of those initial um, uh, feedback comments from Ms. Uh, uh, Buckerfield, we eliminated the residential floor area uh, request. So that's no longer a variance. And the height that was originally proposed as 10.5 meters has been reduced to uh, 10.05. Uh, the other uh, variances, uh, the driveway width, garage size and building depth uh, remain, but um, but they, um, uh, and, and, and they, they remain uh, and they're part of the discussion today. So this again leaves four four variances. I'll only speak to the height, depth, uh, and the driveway width, uh, noting that staff support the um, the garage floor area. Um, but it's important to note uh, to keep in mind when you look at the built form that's proposed, and this is the uh, existing house that has since been demolished. Um, but when you look at the proposed built form, uh, you have basically a divide. Um, south is the uh, the portico and uh, the the south part of the building, sorry, the east part of the building, that um, that uh, backs onto the three lots on Cary Drive, and then there's the west half that uh, butts the property to the west at uh, Morrison Drive, and those are the, the garages that have been staggered. So so when as we move forward, uh, if you keep the staggered uh, position of the building in mind, that will help uh, in terms of both the uh, appearance of the height and the depth. Um, to start off with, I think it's important to note the variances that are not required, um, uh, and it's uh, a lens, a lens at least that I, I took pride in, in ensuring that we can comply with as many of the standards as possible. As I said earlier, there's no depth variance, there's no coverage variance, uh, there are no setback variances, and in fact, on the, um, on the west side, on the Morrison lot to our west, that, uh, setback was increased from, uh, uh, the existing 2.4 to 4.2, and the setback on the south side um, is 4.24, and as you know, 4.2 meters is required. Uh, we have a substantial rear yard of 32.83 meters, and uh, importantly to note that the front yard setback, the minimum required is 11.3 uh, meters. Uh, we position the building at 14.65 meters, roughly 10 feet further back from the minimum front yard requirement. Uh, in terms of the driveway coverage, uh, uh, you should take a note that uh, you're permitted no more than 50% of driveway pavement. Uh, this proposal is at 43. Front yard landscaping, a minimum of 50%. Uh, we're at 57. Uh, there's no issue with the curb cuts because uh, collectively the driveway, the circular driveway is uh, less than nine meters. And as you know, there's no prohibition on, on circular driveways. So just some very um, uh, high level observations. As you know, this is a fairly large lot. It has an area of 1,851 square meters with the 30 meter frontage and the 66 meter depth. Um, in my opinion, the 26.72 meter depth can uh, be handled by this lot. Um, so if we go to my, um, my uh, detailed uh, planning justification report. And if we go to page five, and I'm sure you've seen it and you've done your site visit, but if you go to page five, uh, I show the the existing um, uh, built form and overlay that in red, the proposed built form. 
And what, what's important to note is the, that the existing bill form um, is, and the proposed bill form is cited almost in the same, in same relationship, uh, same footprint. Um, and this is important as when you look at the uh, issue of depth. Um, so some of the, uh, the staff report and some of the neighbors have expressed uh, an issue of overview and privacy and shadows. And I, and I certainly as a planner uh, cannot see that being an impact. You know, they, they're perceived, but the, there is no windows in the roof that can be overlooked. The windows and the height of the walls are all within the nine meters well below that. Um, uh, what's important to note is that there's also a gray change from the front of the lot where you take the grade to the front wall, roughly about uh, 0.9 meters. And this, as I said, is important as you move along to consider the issue of height. Um, I, I will point out uh, two very recent examples, uh, and I don't like to deal with variances as precedent, but I only like to deal with the planning concepts that are contained in those approvals that were granted by your committee and supported by the town. And this is as it relates to section 11.19 of the official plan and the uh, design guidelines. Um, one example was 1188 carry just uh, at the corner, just uh, two lots up. Um, there was a variance that was granted uh, on October 4th for a depth of 26.28 meters from 20 meters. And staff supported that eventually. Uh, um, and they said that the, uh, they attributed the uh, support on the basis that the terrace was discounted from from the uh, from the uh, area of depth uh, on the height. They also reference the fact that there's one meter differential in grade, and therefore the uh, height that was granted there was um, was acceptable. Um, and, and these two principles, unfortunately, were not followed in this instance. And I'll and I'll demonstrate how. There is another one down the road that was approved um, uh, earlier last year in July at uh, Morrison. The depth there was 27.61 meters um, and the height uh, there. I, I won't deal with the height because the grades there were so phenomenal that uh, the height is not a comparison, but just on a concept, uh, the height there, um, staff said, because there's no uh, RFA and lot coverage, um, which regulates the scale and mass, and it was acceptable. And I, and I put to you, we don't need that uh, variances either. And therefore the massing and the scale is acceptable, particularly also because we're further back from the front lot line um, than required by the bylaw. Um, on the depth, they've excluded um, uh, the terraces and they only dealt with the habitable space. And I submit that's an appropriate tool. Um, getting into the specifics of the variance, the garage area, as you heard, uh, is supported by staff and, and I appreciate that. Uh, but having, find, having found that it meets the four tests and they support it, uh, they don't support the driveway variances, which in fact, is is important to access the garage. If you can't have one, uh, the other one won't work. So, in terms of the uh, ten point five meter uh, driveway, uh, that is in front of the garage, and it provides an apron, if you will, uh, a hammerhead, a turnaround for vehicles to get in and out. The balance of the driveway is anywhere between four point uh, uh, four point five to four four point six one meters, and that apron area is only a very small component of the, the entire um, driveway. The issues of, of uh, hardscape uh, and stormwater management, in my opinion, don't exist. Uh, there's a site alteration permit. Uh, the, the, there's a 57% uh, landscape open space in the front yard. Uh, the hardscape um, uh, is not uh, exceeding the bylaw requirements. Um, and, and, and I've also talked to the engineer and he assures me that uh, this is not a concern whatsoever. The soils are, are very sandy and they're quite deep, so it, it can accommodate uh, what we're proposing. Uh, there were some issues with the circular driveway, but I can tell you that I've done um, uh, a review of the area and I personally found 14 within the immediate neighborhood uh, at 1138, 1151, 1163, 1173, 1193, 1192, 1182, and 1158 Morrison Heights, and also at 316, 332, and 346 Morrison. Um, uh, there's also a couple of uh, driveways on Cary Drive, and happens to one of them happens to be next door to one of the uh, neighbors who filed uh, an email, Mr. Williams. Um, you know, circular driveways are in fact uh, part of the character of the area, and we're not introducing something that's uh, different or unique. 
Uh, let me know if I'm reaching my time limit, please, because I can't you, see. You have courtesy. Um, so if you're ready to wrap it up, uh, we would really appreciate it. Okay, if I can have another uh, minute or two. In terms of the building depth, I submit to you, if you apply the same standards as the other examples I gave you, we're at uh, roughly 21.53 meters, which is exactly what staff have indicated. But if you uh, look at the existing depth, which is uh, over 22 meters, it's in line and it's uh, compatible. Um, there's no issues of overlook. Um, the building, as I said, is staggered. So the depth is uh, a lot less as you approach the garage. Uh, and um, now just getting to the issue of a chimney, um, I can speak to that. Uh, those were for a wood burning uh, piece of oven and a, um, and a fireplace. Uh, the client's prepared to go with uh, propane and that height can be dropped if you will on a condition to say no higher than 4.9 meters, that's fine. Uh, in terms of the height, I, I provided in my planning justification, the diagram that shows what uh, the visual impact would be at nine meters at the 11.2 uh, meter setback versus what the height would be at uh, 14 meters at uh, 10 and a half. So the extra three meters, 3.3 meters for an extra meter height uh, will fall within the envelope of a nine meter at 11 meters. So I think there's no visual impact and given the grade change of 0.9 meters, the actual height is 9.16 if you measure from the base of the foundation, from the base of the front of the building to the height of the roof. Um, in terms of the neighbors, uh, the two most immediate neighbors, the one on Morrison and the, and the three on Cary have not objected. Uh, Mr. Balmoro has raised the issue of the scale of the property. I'm not sure what that means or a new property line. Uh, Mr. Williams uh, uh, indicates there's no overview impact on him, but. Uh, for the neighbors to the east and they've not objected. On the issue of the 14 trees, yes, uh, they have or will be removed as part of a site alteration permit, but 48 new trees will be planted. And uh, just to wrap up, I feel that the variances individual collectively meet the uh, Oak, livable Oakville policies. They appropriately respond to the design guidelines for stable residential areas. They meet the general intent and purpose of the zoning by official plan and individually and collectively the variances are minor and I'm here to answer any questions and thank you for the extra time. Very well, thank you, Mr. Cronus. Are there any questions or items of clarification, Mr. Cronus, at this time? Mr. Talowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Cronus, you referenced other um, variances in the neighborhood and uh, the fact that you don't believe there's an impact on the height uh, we didn't really see much in your presentation, but is there any chance your presentation you had like context drawings for those other applications you referenced or a streetscape drawing to show the uh, the proposed height variance in relation to the houses on either side? Uh, no, Mr. Talaski, I haven't, but what I prepared on page, uh, on page uh, five of my report, um, is um, uh, an eyesight view of what a nine meter height would be in comparison to 10 and a half set back at uh, what we're proposing. Um, and again, uh, the if you take the concept that uh, staff have supported in other examples where there's a great change, in this instance, 0.9 meters, um, they, uh, uh, and particularly when I look at 1188, um, they had a, they had, um, a great difference of uh, one meter, and they were provided a height variance of 9.45. Uh, Initially, they proposed 9.49 uh, during the May application that got deferred, and they came back at 9.44. They dropped it by 0 0.05 meters, but staff supported on the basis there's a one meter grade differential, and I submit that principle applies here as well. Um, we only have one lot to the west, that fronts on Morrison Drive. All the other lots around us front on Cary uh, Road. So it is a bit different and being pushed back as much as it is, I submit the visual impact from the street is very minimal. But you're not able to give us any evidence in relation to the houses on either side of this one. And so the context that, of the variance you're asking for. No, the uh, houses on either side front on Cary Road. Uh, there's only one house that fronts on Morrison if you look at the notice map. So they're in a different, in a different, uh, they're in an enclave 
So there's a horseshoe of Cary Drive, and then uh, these lots are there. This lot is in the middle, in fact, in the neighbor lot to the uh, west. So, but they had a one meter grade differential, and it's 0.9 meters in this instance. It's almost uh, similar in nature, but um, and that was a corner lot, and we are sort of an interior lot with lots that back onto us, not um, next to us, except the existing building to the west. Thank you. Mr. Cronus, can you comment on the um, comments from staff that the, the already approved DSP is, has a discrepancies with the current proposed site plan, so they're not really matching? Yes, that's true. Uh, the DSP that was issued uh, was uh, first to allow for the demolition of the existing structure and to pull a permit. Uh, and it was important because, as you know, construction uh, costs are rising, labor costs are rising. And in order to get in and start doing some work, uh, we applied for a permit. Uh, the foundation has been uh, dug and then the client uh, wished us to pursue this option. But we will need to go back and have a DESP reevaluated in the context of the circular driveway uh, predominantly and um, for the proposal that's before you. That's standard site alteration permit uh, process. Okay, very well, thank you. Are there any other questions or items of clarification of Mr. Cronus at this time? Okay, um, has there anyone called in for this application, Ms. McRae? Um, I see no one at this time. Okay, if there's anyone in the audience who'd like to speak to this application, please do raise your hand before we take the matter into committee. No, there's, there's no one raising their hand. Okay, very well. Um, who would like to make a motion? We can start the discussion. Go ahead, Mr. Hartcastle. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, maybe I raised my hand a little too soon. I am, <laughs> I am reflecting significantly on this one. Um, the, well, well, there are, are uh, well, some of the comments that were made by the applicant um, specifically um, dealt with the individual applications on, an, or sorry, the individual variances on an individual basis. I am struggling to get past the cumulative impact of, of the variances together um, and the, the impact of the, the variances cumulatively on the massing of the building. Um, and on that basis, I'm going to be put, putting forward a recommendation of refusal uh, consistent with the staff comments. I do not feel that the requested variances conform to the four tests of the act. Um, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hartcastle. Is there discussion on this recommendation? Uh, Madam Chair, I, uh, I'm not in support of the motion before the committee. I uh, think that the uh, applicant's agent uh, has illustrated uh, a number of things dealing with the massing of the building, as well as uh, talking about the uh, circular driveway, um, keeping with uh, development in that neighborhood, um, as well as uh, with regards to the height uh, I'm satisfied with how the uh, surrounding houses uh, and how they're positioned on this lot size and based on the report that was provided. I don't think that is going to be have a, a, a significant negative impact on the neighbors. Um, and also noting, you know, from uh, what the applicant had originally been discussing with the town and some of the changes that they have made in order to uh, address uh, some of the items. Uh, I, 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 I'm not in support of the motion to deny this application. I do find it does meet the uh, four tests of the Planning Act, and uh, and I do find that it's minor in nature. So I will not support that motion. Well, very well. Thank you, Mr. Flemington. Any further comments? Go ahead, Mr. Tlowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I am inclined to support the motion on the table. Um, I've got a number of concerns. Um, 
also with the the presentation the applicant suggested he doesn't want to argue precedent then continue to argue precedent without in my mind showing the impact of this variance in relation to the context of this property um, like the applicant i'm a little confused to why the staff supported the garage variance but not the driveway variance um, i think neither should have been supported because I would argue that the width on the driveway was designed to prevent exactly what was being proposed, a wide three-car garage driveway. And with that, Madam Chair, I'm not in favor of this application. Okay. Thank you for this discussion. With that, we'll uh, put the motion. the motion on the table is to deny the application. All those in support of the denial? Okay, all those against? Okay, and the application has been denied. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cronus. Thank you. Have a good evening. Uh, you have a good evening. Uh, application uh, C042 2023 of 553 Holsey Crescent. Uh, this is application, again, CAV 042-2023 at 553 Holsey Crescent. Um, if you are interested in speaking to this application, please call 905-815-6095. Staff will be on hand to take your call and provide you with further instructions to join the video conference. I have emails of opposition from a ZUC, a Dorota and Mir Miroslaw Rizola Whiskey. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing these names correctly and I, I do apologize if I am making any errors. And uh, Kathy Anderson. Um, who is the agent for this application? Good evening, Mr. Nassar. Good evening, Madam Chair and uh, committee members. Uh, my name is Osama Abu Nassar. I'm the agent for the um, my client, the owner of the property. Uh, <clears throat> um, I would like to keep it short. Um, just it was over 12 hours a day for me. Try to put my thoughts together um, in a good way and uh, fast. Um, we are uh, requesting uh, <clears throat> to increase the um, uh, the size of the house by uh, around eight uh, percent uh, on the um, uh, over the forty one percent coverage area. Um, however, um, we just because of the nature of the property, the lot it is a kind of pie shape has a large frontage, sixty five feet, but it goes back narrower. So. <laughs> the actual coverage area for this uh, for the zoning pilot it's 35 percent however we propose only uh, 29.8 i believe uh, percent which uh, less than what's the coverage area uh, the um, we because we needed some area for the backyard uh, we didn't want to uh, my client didn't want to um, have full coverage area the 35 <clears> percent <throat> he preferred to have the uh, extra square footage on the uh, on the second floor because he needed um, minimum four bedrooms. So the um, this area is mainly really only four bedrooms house. There is no extra or additional square footage uh, requested beside the uh, again like the what he needed for his family. <clears throat> um, this in short, um, I have read the the, uh, the uh, uh, town uh, staff comments about the scale and the massing. Um, uh, I don't know what to answer about the scale here. Uh, sorry, because just really they said about uh, the house, the new house, it is going to be larger than the existing dwelling. It is n normal. Otherwise, you wouldn't uh, demolish the old house and build a newer house if you want to build the same uh, scale house. Now, if we talk about the massing of the house, the way they phrase it, uh, 
I, um, with my um, background as a, a regional planner as well with PhD in regional planning, just the way um, uh, staff uh, put the, they phrase their comments uh, with my respect to all of them. All of them are our colleagues and we respect them. Just written with a little bit, uh, it sounds like it's really more massive house than what it is in reality. Okay, and um, I really prefer that um, because we don't know sooner or later, maybe the whole neighborhood will be rebuilt. Um, because around the around this house, there are three or four houses, the newer houses plus the road. And I did tremendous amount of houses in the town of Oakville in the last few years, and all of them, they were older homes and demolished and built the newer homes with larger scales. So uh, practically, um, <clears throat> The, the the face of the of the streets are changing uh, and it will change sooner or later so um, we cannot say because of the neighbor um, house is smaller that means the newer house can't be larger uh, this practically is I am saying like uh, if I cannot um, have a new car that means my neighbor cannot have a new car or uh, um, what about next year if the neighbor sold his house or he decided to build a bigger house? Okay, it's exactly the same. However, uh, uh, that's, that's in short what uh, I think. I read also the comments from the neighbors. Um, one of the neighbors actually, and the comments, uh, just I'm trying to remember the name, um, Ms. Z Z Z Yes, um, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> I think just um, uh, the statistic they gave or the uh, calculation, it's, uh, I think it's wrong. The 3.39%, uh, it is not 18%, it is 7.39% uh, more. It's, uh, I think just they, did the, uh, they make it sound to be way bigger than what it is needed uh, or what it is about. Um, and uh, the other comments came from other neighbors about the old trees and when we demolish the house, um, we will, uh, my client's uh, proposing to demolish the house as soon as he got the building permit uh, for to build the new house. Uh, other comment about the water in the neighborhood, about the drainage, and this looked like it's very old issue in the neighborhood because the neighbor, she talked about since 1999, this issue is, and it's nothing to do with us or uh, this house specifically, I think. Um, I don't know, I cannot comment on city services or uh, the draining uh, system in the, or the storm system in the city. Uh, that's in short, uh, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Oops, sorry. Uh... Mr. Nassar, I, I, I just have a question for you. The, yes. uh, the, the design of the house, uh, it, it may not have been a huge impact with the variance that you are requesting. If, if you had broken down the design a little bit to give some elements of relief to the massing and the scale that the town staff speaks about, did you not consider that as an option? Definitely, we will consider like uh, all options, but this like different schools of thinking, right? Uh, the design, if we will follow that theory, okay, well, that's what I used to teach my students. Like, if you, uh, if you teach your, uh, if you, if we will build all houses are the same, okay, uh, to match the neighbor, the neighbor houses, that means we will not have any new ideas. Uh, the whole city will look the same. Okay, we'll not have new buildings or um, we will not have creative buildings around the city uh, or the town in general. Okay? Like, uh, and it's not just for the town of Oakville, this could be anywhere around the world. Okay? We should uh, think out of the box and not to say because the neighbor's house look like that, that means we shouldn't have that house. Uh, I, I, I have to clarify, I don't think that the this approach has anything to do with the neighbor's designs but if you're asking for an overbuild mm -hmm. as a committee you have to give us a reason why 
you are requesting that overbuild and you have to show that you've made an effort to mitigate the negative impact of that overbuild. It can't be just a blanket statement that you will like this design and your client has rightfully earned their like of a design. Um, yes, you can build as of right, then build as of right according to the zoning bylaw, the official plan, and everything that is stipulated within them. That is my point. True, true. I agree with you. Like, again, like uh, we could, uh, we could uh, get, uh, we could, you could do the same, the same elevation study in a million different ways. Okay. Yeah. Definitely the way to redesign or to reduce the glass or to make punch windows. But uh, where we will go with that, I don't know. Okay. But definitely, yes, definitely. There is there is way to redo it. Okay, I'll leave the floor for my colleagues to ask you their questions. Uh, uh, is there are any items of clarification? Sorry, I hear an echo. Is there any items of clarification or um, questions of Mr. Nassar at this time? Ms. Anderson, can you please uh, mute yourself until you are invited to speak? Ms. Anderson is also there as an attendee. So is she also on her computer? She's, she's phoned her, in, but she's also listed as an attendee. Right, right, because I think she's on her computer and she's also phoned in. So uh, I don't know what you want me to do. I'm doing, I think you guys finish with your questions and then we can deal. I can ask Ms. Anderson what she'd like to do. It looks like she's muted now. She's muted herself. So um, the feedback that I've been getting has subsided. So we should be okay to proceed. Um, items of clarification or questions of uh, Mr. Tala uh, uh, of Mr. Nassar. There aren't any. Okay. Um, are there several people who would like to speak to the application, or is it just Miss Anderson? Um, yes. The only I don't see any other hands raised um she, it looks like she's phoned in but she's also must be on her computer as well so i could move her into the meeting on her computer or she can stay on the phone and unmute herself miss anderson, anderson I, I'm, I'm assuming you hear us um please pick one of the modes of communication and then just keep the other one muted so that okay no so you know what I, i'm just gonna she's got her hand raised now so i'm gonna move her okay. in to the meeting and if all that works then she can hang up her phone so oh there she goes so just one moment <clears throat> Okay, she's moved into the meeting. Go ahead, Ms. Anderson. Did you want to address the committee or ask any questions? I really wanted to just say two things, and I know that uh, Mr. Nassar had commented on the flooding or whatever, the Oakville drainage since 1999, but in my, in my submission, 1999, we would have water standing there for a very, very small time amount of time, and it would dry up. In the last five, 10 years, when these homes have been built around our entire neighborhood, we are now seeing water that stands in the ditches and never dries up. I have rivers in my backyard. My neighbors, they also are experiencing the same amount of flooding. I drove by a house on Pine Grove around the corner from Wolsey today. The entire ditch is full of water. The house next door, his ditch is full of water from a new build that is standing there. I am concerned that if we approve a 48% lot coverage where he is allowed 41% lot coverage, we're gonna have people using this as a precedence and then going to a 52% lot coverage and a 60% lot coverage. We are in low land down here. I don't know if you realize, but it's becoming a problem and it has become a problem the last five years, mostly. 
And with all the talk about global warming and everybody water rising, nobody seems to care much about, they don't take note of it. So I'm, I'm concerned about the massing and the volume of these homes that are raising our water table down here. It is a high water table and dumping sump pumps into our ditches is not a solution. It just runs right back into the house to be dumped back out in the street again. And it's not a drainage problem, it's a water table problem. And that is something that we can't change. That's the topography of the land down here. We are not a high elevation. So that's just, that's my concern. And that's, I, I think granting more lot coverage, more lot coverage is just gonna set a precedence and it's going to get out of control, which I think it kind of is now. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you for your submission, and and I uh, I sympathize with uh, with the situation, but you're not the only neighborhood that deals with stormwater management and issues of drainage, which is why we are constantly fielding uh, these concerns from neighbors. So I appreciate your submission. Um, are there any questions? Just one more of, thing. Uh, yes, go ahead, Miss Anderson. Um, I, I, I've worked in, in planning and development for years, and we've always had a mandatory soft landscaping, hard landscaping in all of our, our projects that we've, we've designed. And the soft landscaping is really for the absorption of water. And if we are going to continue to do masses of hard landscaping and increase lot coverage where we d diminish our soft landscaping, there's nowhere to drink up the water. So it's not... I don't think it's a drainage problem. I think that in Florida, there are no basements for a reason. And I think that the high water table down here is a reason to not increase lot coverage. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Um, Mr. Nassar, you do have the opportunity to respond and then we'll take the matter into committee. We appreciate your submission, Ms. Anderson. Uh, this will be the end of the discussion on your part, and it is now, according to our procedure bylaw, that Mr. Nassar has an opportunity to respond, and then the committee takes the matter um, into committee. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Um, yes, I really um, agree with uh, Ms. Anderson. Um, however, I thought I answered, like, um, we still, we build less than what's the coverage area uh, uh, allow us uh, the 35 percent we are having 29 uh, percent of the roof so uh, practically really this house has less roof than what uh, we could build uh, with uh, if we will go 35 percent coverage area uh, and the other thing she was talking about deeper basements and uh, the other thing uh, in this uh, design also we have only six foot uh, maybe six inches uh, deep basement, uh, even if we have nine feet basement or something, but it is raised. So we are not digging deeper. Uh, just this to answer Ms. Anderson's uh, concern. Thank you. Okay, very well. Uh, finally, uh, my esteemed colleagues, do you have any questions of uh, either the applicant or uh, Ms. Anderson, or we're ready to take the matter into committee? Okay, very well. Who would like to move a motion? Go ahead, Mr. Talowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I think you stole my thunder uh, earlier. Did I? Yes. Um, <laughs> I, I, seem to be making... I promise I'll let you have the next one. <laughs> yeah. I seem to be making this speech far too often lately, as uh, you did earlier. Um, there's no doubt that this is a street of primarily older bungalows. There is no question that you can build a two-story house. There are a few examples on the street already of people building two-story house. And if the applicant were to build within the bylaw, you could have that house of whatever design. But again, as we're seeing very often lately, the applicant doesn't want to build within the bylaw. He wants to build approximately 600 square feet more than he's permitted. And when you're asking for permission to build beyond the bylaw, the onus needs to be on the applicant to try to mitigate the impact 
of that additional size. And I agree with staff and the residents in this case, there is no attempt here to mitigate the impact of this extra size of this building. And with that, I don't find that that extra 600 square feet meets the intent of the Planning Act. I don't think it's minor, and I certainly don't believe it's desirable. Um, so, Madam Chair, I'm going to move that this application be denied for those reasons. I would note that there are three letters of opposition. Um, I will speak to the resident that did present, um, just for clarity, that site grading at this point is dealt with at the building permit stage when it gets there. And as, just for clarity, as the applicant indicated, um, it's not a variance for coverage. The applicant is not trying to build on more of the land than he's entitled to. He's trying to build greater square footage. So again, Madam Chair, with that, I'm moving the application be denied. Okay, thank you, Mr. Talowski. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. Uh, all those of support of denying the application? Okay. The application has been denied, none opposed. Good evening, Minister Nassar. Thank you very much, appreciate it. Okay. Application CAV 043-2023 at 2289 Chancery Lane West. Again, it's CAV 043 of 2023 at 2289 Chancery Lane West. If you're interested in speaking to this application, please call 905-815-6095. Staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instructions to join the video conference. Please raise your hand if you'd like to be moved into the meeting. Yeah, I've moved the agent into the meeting. Good evening. Uh, who do we have with us? Uh, Mr. M Mateljan? Yes, uh, good evening, uh, uh, members. Uh, my name is Rick Mateljan, and I'm uh, agent for the applicant at uh, 22. Mr. Mateljan, can Island. you please turn your camera on? Yes, certainly. Yes, there we go. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, sir. Yes, thank you. Uh, good, good evening, uh, Chair and, and, and members. My name is Rick Mitelgen. I'm um, the agent for the applicant uh, at 2289 Chancery Lane West. Uh, this is an unusual lot in that um, it's presently vacant, and this lot fronts onto an unopened portion of Chan Chancery Lane West. So that, that so the house effectively. Um, effectively, is is behind a, a, the the the, uh, the existing houses on on Chantry Lane, Lane West, and it's uh, it's um, it's 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 abutted to the east by a narrow private street called Stones Lane, and there are some other houses that that front onto onto Stones Lane. Um, the impact of that odd configuration is that this house is is very difficult to to view from from the street, or this property is very difficult to view from the street. And will continue to be so after the uh, the um, the uh, the building is is uh, is built. Uh, we're before you today to ask for three variances. Uh, the first variance is uh, technical in, in nature. It's it's in in respect of the of, of the front yard setback. And in this case, uh, the front yard um, the the front yard is 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 in fact only a very small portion of, of the property where it fronts onto Chancery Lane West. So the so the front yard is really just the as we're looking at the site plan, the front yard is is really just the lower left corner of the of, of the site. 
and if you look, there's a there's a there's an arc that comes off that corner. I've drawn it as 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 a dashed line. That dashed line is effectively the front yard setback, and the and the the variance in this case is te technical in, in nature in that our front yard setback, in fact, is 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 excessive, and so we're not asking for a decrease in front yard setback. We're actually asking for an increase in front yard setback because of that odd lot configuration with how the property uh, just effectively touches Chancery Lane only at that left front corner. So that's the the uh, the, the reason for the uh, for that first variance. And, and as I say, that variance is, is very technical in, in in nature and it has has no impact. Uh, the second variance is in respect of the um, the garage area. Uh, in, in this case, this is a tandem garage situation. Uh, there's a typical two car two car drive that goes up to the garage door. A typical two car wide garage uh, entry. And so the impact of that of that of that uh, of, of that variance is is minimum is, is 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 minimal in that there really is no impact to that to that that additional garage space because it is a tandem um, situation. Uh, the third variance that we're before you today to ask for is in is in respect of the uh, gross floor area or the uh, or the the RFA. Uh, in this case, the uh, maximum allowed under the bylaw is twenty nine percent. We're proposing thirty point nine percent. So an increase of 2.9%. Uh, the house has been designed, you know, you know, in a way to min minimize the the impact of uh, that. Uh, there's a varying roof lines, there's varying eave lines, um, and the fact and and varying varying uh, varying uh, varying materials. Uh, we've gone through a a a, 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 a number of uh, of discussions with staff from the standpoint of taking the the design and. And um, coming up with some some options and, and so on to to reduce the size, which in fact we have done in consultation with staff, and to and to look at the at the, at the roof lines, the windows, the materials, and so on. And staff are in support of this uh, of, of of all three variances. So um, so with with that and with the fact as well that our client has done a um, a significant job of of, of, of discuss, discussing with his neighbors. Uh, he has um, a, a number of letters of support, which we have pr provided for the for the committee. Uh, to our knowledge, there are no no neighbors in, in in opposition, and in fact, all of the neighbors in the area are in support of, of this variance. So, given the support of the neighbors, given the support of um, of uh, town staff, we're, we're confident that the, the uh, impact of the of variance is, is not significant, and we would ask for the uh, for the um, the approval of the committee tonight to grant these variances. Thank you, uh, Mr. Metaldrin. Um, I recognize that uh, the staff is in support and you do have uh, uh, several letters of support, uh, seven uh, on my account here. Um, I do have a question about the hydro uh, issue with the proposed driveway that was uh, addressed in staff's report by Oakville Hydro. You didn't comment on that. Uh, we can we can change that uh, that configuration. That actually isn't that area which they're, which they're, they're they're talking about. And in fact, if I can ask staff to uh, zoom in on the um, if I can ask staff to zoom in on the um, site plan on the lower left side of the site plan, I can point at the area. Um, so yes, yeah, so if we yes. Perfect, perfect. So the so the the area in in question, in fact, isn't even on our property. The prop, property line you can see is that is that is that the dark line just below the the the, uh, the house. the The part on the plan, which is is, is identified there as part three plan twenty R, so so on so on and so forth, that's actually the unopened part of Chancery Lane West, which the house fronts onto. And the area which where uh, Hydro was was talking about. Was the the was below that was the or 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 was the was it was the was the was the lower left corner of that of that part three, so that's really not even our driveway. That's 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 effectively a a, a connection between Chancery Lane and our client's property, and so um, we can we can certainly work with staff to to pull that 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 part back, but that's not even going to be our driveway. Okay, I believe the planner has their hand raised. Um... I can just pull out of the, yeah. Mr. Mosaic, you go ahead. 
for you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to um, ask that there be a correction made uh, in the staff report um, under variance number two, residential floor area. Um, the proposed residential floor area is 30.90%, um, not 30.16%. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Thank you. Okay. Do you have any comments with respect to the uh, notes made by Oakville Hydro? Because yep. you, that was also in the staff report. Yes, that as um, the applicant has mentioned, um, that is not part of the um, uh, subject property. Um, it's uh, um, so that uh, can definitely be addressed um, through the site plan process. Okay, very well. You concur with the applicant. Are there any questions or items of clarification of Mr. Mateljan at this time? Uh, Mr. Flemington, did you have a question? No, I was just prepared to move a motion. Okay, very well. Give me a second. I just want to make sure that no one has called in for this property uh, or, uh, or is waiting to address the committee. Um, there's no one at this time, but if you could please read out the names of the people who um, sent in their, le their letters of support. Yes. Madam Chair, yes. thank the you. The letters of support that I have on hand are SNS Ashburn. Uh, Harkam Jeet and Baljinder Dadwar, um, Deer Deeder and Martin Thomas, Sean Goff, Glenda and Robert Ferguson, Brian and Sandra Tucker, and Marilyn Beamish. Those are the ones I have on record. If um... If there's no one uh, waiting to speak to this matter and there are no items of clarification, go ahead, Mr. Flemington, you may um, start a motion. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Having uh, conducted my site visit as well as having reviewed the applicant's uh, written submission, um, as well as noting that the town's uh, written staff report is in favor of the motion, um, as well as taking into the account um, the presentation this evening, noting that there were no uh, oral um, objections to the application, noting that there were the seven letters of support of which you uh, commented on uh, from the uh, neighborhood. I am prepared to move a motion in support of the application as applied for, finding that it does meet the uh, tests under the Planning Act and that it's minor in nature. Um, I would like to include the following two conditions. First, that the dwelling be constructed in general accordance with the submitted site plan dated February 13th, 2023, and elevation drawings dated December 15th, 2022. And our second condition that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. Very well. Uh, is there a discussion on this recommendation? <clears throat> See none. Uh, all those in support. Okay, the application has been approved, none opposed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mateljan. Application CAV 173 of 2022 deferred from January the 25th of 2023 uh, at 1240 Baldwin Drive. Again, it's CAV A 173 of 2022 deferred from January the 25th of 2023 at 1240 Baldwin Drive. If you're interested in speaking to this application, please call 905. 6095 staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instructions to join the video conference. 
Um, we have one letter of opposition from a Caroline and Glenn Busby, and letters of support from a Gina Fiera, Valerie Jarrett, Andy Yellery, Ahmed Butt, Basim Salman, Ahmed Haba, Vanna Midirath. Hello, Mr. Hicks. Good evening, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Thank you for uh, allowing me to make my presentation here tonight. I just, I'll go through these two renderings just quickly. If you can go to the next slide, these are just renderings that I'll come back to later on. But if we could go to the uh, right to item number four or page number four, which is the site plan. So, so we are here, this is, has, has been deferred twice. We were working with the uh, planning department to try and resolve those concerns. And I'm happy to say that we have resolved those concerns. We do have actually two other letters of support, but they weren't obtained in time to send in to you today. We're from 1264 and 1266 Baldwin. I'm happy to send those through to the committee at any point. Planning now supports the application. Mr. and Mrs. Busby do not support it, but I thought I would take a little bit of time just to run you through why we're asking for some of the variances that we're asking for. This is a uh, very unusual lot. It's really has three sides to it. So the change of interpretation that came from zoning is that they told us we had to take the front curving lot line, consider half of it frontage, and consider half of it flankage. So based on that and taking the applicable setbacks, we end up with this green shape that's shown in there. So my objective as the architect was to see how could I fit something as close as possible within that shape, which is a very difficult shape to work within and also um, find a solution that gave the owners an appropriate backyard because it is a corner lot, so that's always important to us, and find something, a solution that was going to be, um, I guess, compatible to the, the neighborhood. And I think what we've found from the from planning's comments is that uh, we think we have, we have accomplished that. But what I wanted to clarify is that three of the variances, which are for flankage yard, there is one little wee corner here that doesn't meet the flankage yard. It's, it's a piece of the uh, covered porch that's at the front. There is one portion on the front yard because this is considered the front yard. From this point to this point is considered the front yard. So we needed uh, this piece of the house does not comply with the required front yard. The red line that's shown underneath there is the existing house. So we've tried to respect the face of that house. And then because this is considered a front yard, what would otherwise be considered a side yard is now considered the backyard, and it requires a larger rear yard variance of um, 7.5 meters. So these portions, these triangular portions of the house exceed that. It's our interpretation that this is in essence really a side yard, and this is the garage of the adjacent neighbor, so it really has very little impact on it. And the last variance is based upon um, the gross floor area on the site, we're under on the coverage, under on the height, and we have worked fairly diligently with planning to try and get rid of as many variances as possible. And if you go back two slides just to the rendering to speak to, so what we've tried to do to mitigate the increased uh, size of the house is we've tried to keep as much of the house with one-story roof lines. So there are two-story roof lines in the center portion of it. We do meet the heights requirement. And we've tried to keep those one and a half or one story roof lines as much as possible. So we think we've tried to, to mitigate uh, the increased uh, square footage. So, so with that being said, if we can go back to the site plan, uh, the neighbor to the, um, we'll call it Southeast has some concerns and they will speak to those concerns. Uh, in the last hearing, we said that we would attempt to get in touch with them, and I have to apologize that between the three people that were supposed to do it, I was out of town for six weeks, and we did we did manage to get them, but it was only in the last uh, night or so. So, so we did meet with them, and in their letter, you'll hear that they they don't really have concerns specifically with any individual variants, but their concerns were more addressed to the angulation of the house, which we've had to do to try and face it towards the street, which we think is the right solution. But there's a porch back in here, which is basically at grade or within about 12 inches above grade, because this is a very flat lot. 
And their concern was privacy between this and their pool, which is tucked into the back corner of their property right here. So what we did is we offered to them that we would happily plant, uh, there are some existing trees back here. There's no pool planned for this person's backyard. We would happily plant full-size black cedars from this point to this point to provide them the adequate um, privacy that they need. And we're certainly happy to uh, maintain those. And I think it's important that we would also maintain them in terms of their heights so that they don't become overwhelming in terms of blocking sun from the neighbor to the, the Southeast. So uh, they were happy with that. So they came back and asked us to also consider deleting the porch. And unfortunately, we can't delete that. Part of my second floor sits on top of that porch. But I will point out that we're not asking for a variance for anything on this side lot line. We're not asking for a variance for that porch itself. It does all comply with it. And I respect the fact that uh, we've, we've got a very difficult, very unusual lot. I think personally, I've found a solution that addresses all of the urban design comments that we've had from the planning department. But more importantly, I, I think the, the neighbor had said, well, if we just take that, that hatched area and we just turn it, so it's parallel to their lot line, that it will fit within that square. And I, I've done that many times and it doesn't fit within the square. In fact, we end up with a bigger front yard or flanking variance, but we end up more importantly with no backyard. So what we're, what we're trying to do is create some sort of backyard for the client who lives on this unusual shaped lot. So, and their backyard is adjacent to the backyard here, but it's also adjacent to the backyard of that neighbor. Um, there are really no other solutions that are going to meet the requirements of my client. And I'm, I'm hoping that by adding the, um, and we're prepared to make that a condition of support also to add the landscape screening along here when we would show that and submit that drawing to the, to the committee, certainly within the next day or so, if that's what was required. But we think that, um, it, it does meet the, the tests, the four tests. We do believe that it's an appropriate design. We think we tried to mitigate any increase in square footage. There was a comment that came back from, from zoning and we've now taken this through zoning three different times and they keep coming back with a new interpretation of the zoning bylaw. So I know it's now our role to make sure that we comply with that, but they're now saying our driveway is too far from the side lot line. Uh, I would normally see if you were considered at adding that, but since there's a neighbor who's opposed to it, I'm not going to consider adding that. Our interpretation that the driveway is exactly where the driveway is right now. If we put it where it meets the zoning bylaw, I have to take down a street tree. I'll take that up with the town solicitor and say, as of right, the driveway already exists, so I don't need a variance for it. And if they come back and I lose that battle, I guess I'll be back before the committee at some point in the future. But I th think the the interpretation of this lot and the requirement that the driveway be here, which is where we had it originally and planning one of the garage facing the front street as opposed to the side, we moved it, but I've never heard of that piece of the bylaw before. So that's, that's news to me, that one too. So that you have to have the driveway a minimum from the minimum distance from a side lot line on a corner lot. With that, I'm gonna leave it open to questions and I know certainly the Busbees will want to provide their opinions on the matter as well. So. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair and members. Thank you, Mr. Hicks. Are there any questions or items of clarification of Mr. Hicks at this time? Okay, I see none. Um, has anyone called in to speak to this um, application, Madam Secretary Treasurer? Uh, yes, I'll just, they have to raise their hands and I will move them into the meeting. So just one moment. Okay, I've moved Carolyn Busby into the movie into the meeting. Good evening, Ms. Busby. Hi, it's it's uh, Glenn Busby. Uh, Carol, Hi, uh, good Carolyn evening, Mr. Busby. Well. Sorry, we we're just grappling with technology, but I think we're I think we're good to go. Oh, no, we see you in here. You're loud and clear. Go ahead, sir. Perfect. Thank you. 
Um, you know, so uh, appreciate the, the the committee taking the time today, and of course the the comments from from uh, Mr. Hicks as well. Um, I, you know, I, I think we we've already submitted you know in writing some of our concerns, so I, I won't belabor those. Uh, you know, in listening to some of the previous uh, discussions from the committee, I, I think the, the point that that seems most salient from those that I think applies to this is is speaking of the sum total of the variances. You know, while I recognize that each individual variance may may appear small, and and when staff looks at them individually. Um, they may be small. What we found is, is the net effect of all of them, the orientation of the house, the scale of the house, the proximity of the house to our property, the, the, the you know, all of it creates, a, you know, a significant uh, privacy encroachment to our backyard and our pool area. You know, I recognize, as, as Mr. Hicks said, it, it may be a difficult lot, but, you know, the lot was a, was a known factor all along when, when, you know, the applicant purchased it. So, you know, m our, our thought is, you know, beyond, you know, beyond the hedges, which, you know, which is helpful. Why can, why can we not look at either reducing the footprint or slightly reorienting the house, even if we don't completely reorient it to align to ours? You know, any amount of orientation change would have a significant impact on where the view of the house is aiming. And instead of aiming directly into our backyard would tend to be more overlooking the side yard and the, and the driveway of, of the adjacent property. So I, I think I, I respect that a lot of the changes that have been made to date have been focused on satisfying staff, on, on frontage, on garage orientation. Frankly, none of the changes that have been made to date have had any impact on our concerns that we've now raised over, over the several meetings. You know, so our focus would be on, you know, whether or not the committee would look at the totality of, of, of all the variances being asked for and recognize that the sum of all of those actually has, has potentially significant negative impact on our property in particular. I respect that, you know, there are a number of, of letters in favor. In, in fairness, you know, the majority, we're on a cul-de-sac, the majority of those letters are either on Morrison, not on our street, and therefore are driving past it or aren't, you know, impacted by it or are on the early part of our street. So I'm not, you know, I, I, I respect that, you know, for them, it's, it's a non-issue. I think for us in particular, we're probably the single property that is most impacted um, by all of the design choices. So I, I, I respectfully ask that you sort of weigh our, our concerns perhaps more than, than some of the, uh, the you know, the positive uh, notes from others, given the specific impact that, that we feel we have. Mm, certainly, that's a fair ask. Um, we've read your submission. Do you have anything further to add? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say overall, you know, we'd love to work, you know, with, with Mr. Hicks and the team in a spirit of cooperation, find a solution. We're, we're looking forward to a new house being built beside us. You know, we've met the owner recently and are, you know, are happy to have him moving into the neighborhood. So it's, you know, we're really seeking a win-win here where, you know, that they're able to get, you know, a house that they're happy with, um, you know, but my question would be, you know, why can it not, you know, as, as several committee members have raised several times over the course of the evening, why not be within the bylaws rather than asking for a series of series of variances that, that have detrimental impact to us, you know, so is there a win-win, you know, changing the orientation a bit, you know, scaling back a bit, some of these things that could, you know, be a significant improvement to us and, and frankly, a, a minor difference in the net product for the, for the client. Yes, and while I respect your, your point of view, I think this is uh, what we're presented with today is a culminating of that effort over the past few uh, attempts. And um, so I see also where Mr. Hicks is coming from. Uh, however, he did mention uh, something to do with the landscaping that you kind of mitigate your try to keep you happy as a neighbor um do you have any comment on that if you'd be open to that no. i mean certainly mr hicks and the client seems to want to work with you so we will definitely weigh the yeah. application on its merits but yeah. uh, i just had uh, to ask you that question while i've got you so 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 to just to comment on your former point, I, I agree that this is the culmination of a series of efforts. Uh, I guess my counter argument to that would be all of the, all of the changes have been to mitigate frontage and garage orientation. Neither of those have any impact on our concern. So while I respect that a lot of changes have been made to satisfy certain town issues, I would argue that they have not addressed our concerns with those changes. But, you know, that aside, uh, absolutely. I mean, obviously, you know, it, 
having having a significant uh, wall of hedges is a benefit, and we would certainly welcome that as being a condition. Um, our ask would be that that you know that we look beyond that to additional things that could be done that ultimately would would create a win win for everybody. Okay. You know, and I think that's anything in specific that you'd like that well, anything well, in would, specific would that you would to, like to see well, uh, just so we can get clarification. We're not sure. just talking in you know. Uh, general terms. Right. Well, I think, yeah, I think the, you know, the most obvious thing would be, and, you know, and Mr. Hicks mentioned it, within the zone that's allowed, the green on the plan, there is the possibility of, of skewing the orientation of the house. So it is in more in close alignment to ours that, that would, you know, when you look at it from a, from a sort of square footage in that green space standpoint, would create no more bylaw violations, you know, or, or uh, concerns than today, but would orient the house away from looking into our backyard and more in line with our house. I'm not suggesting that has to be all the way to even with our house, but it, you know, any kind of movement in the, in, of the orientation would would potentially be beneficial. You know, the other thing obviously is the particular elements of the house that are most encroaching upon us are are obviously the ones that we feel are closest to us. The, you know, Mr. X mentioned the porch. I understand it's structurally tied in, but you know, it doesn't it doesn't have to be designed that way. Um, you know, but I think those are the two most obvious. The orientation of the house, I think, solves a lot, um, and and frankly could allow them to maintain a very similar, you know, size and space to what they have now, just just skewing the house. Um, you know, otherwise, my suggestion would be, you know, why does it have to exceed, you know, in multiple ways? It's the sum effect of those that are in that place. Well, I appreciate and, and respect your submission. I will let Mr. Hicks comment uh, on uh, all your, your concerns and comments. Um, I cannot presume to speak on the uh, applicant's behalf. Um, are there any questions of Mr. Busby uh, um, by the committee members? before we proceed. Go ahead, Mr. Hardcastle. I think you're still muted. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I think I'm, I, I, my, my thoughts and my questions of Mr. Busby were similar to your own in terms of really understanding, um, uh, what I wanted to understand was um, the point of impact or the, the components that, that are most impacted. You, you, you've spoken a lot about the orientation of the building, but are your concerns um, or do your concerns rest around the uh, uh, location and proximity of the porch or windows or other elements that might be uh, per, um, perceived as, uh, as impacting your privacy? Um, I, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing some challenge, you know, because of the, um, uh, interpretation of the bylaw, there will be any reorientation of that building will result in some um, some changes and may end up with a building that that has components that are pushed further back. So I, I'd like to understand that a little bit more so I can understand how best to weigh uh, weigh your insights. Sure, and and, and that's a, that's a great question. Thank you for that. I, I think. I, I think it's sort of the in part it is the sum totality. I mean, it's the fact that. Because because of the the way it orient that the building will be oriented, which is not dissimilar to the current bungalow. However, it's a bungalow at ground level. We're now talking about a two-story building, so all of the windows, you know, on the back of the house effectively look into our backyard, look at, look directly at our pool. Um, and then, in addition, you know, the 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 piece that's really close, that's frankly, you know, less than two meters from the property line and less than three meters from our actual pool, is that covered porch. And of course, because it's a covered porch. You know, and structurally tied in, has a fireplace, et cetera. You know, we would assume it would be used as as any homeowner would. So we would expect that. You know, there's going to be. You know, it could quite that 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 outdoor entertaining area is going to be very very close to to our space. And and again, you know, if it were backyard to backyard, you know, instead of you know a a, a less than two meter setback, you know, we'd be talking about a six or seven meter setback. So I, I think it's the sum of those two, frankly, the orientation in, as it impacts the windows and as it impacts the whole house coming very close to the property line. The difference is it's not someone's side on our side, it's someone's back on our side, right? So it's it tends to have the effect of sort of, you know, almost feeling like it's overlooming and overlooking our backyard very strongly, all of the windows on the back. And of course that covered porch specifically is the closest single thing and, it, and is the one that we feel is, is really on top of us. Um, 
you know, and again, I respect, you know, obviously we expect a two-story house to be there. We understand that, you know, we're living in a suburban neighborhood. It, it's just about the totality of the impact. So I, I, I don't know if, did, if I, you know, adequately answered your question. But. Thank you. Any further questions? Uh, okay, go ahead, Mr. Hicks. The floor is yours. Thank you, Madam Chair. Can you just uh, can I ask the technician just with the site plan back up for a moment? And I will be I will be brief. I know it's been a long night, so um, I understand his concern with the totality. This is something I always have to deal with planning for, and I, my only response to it is that really we're talking about a little wee point here and a little wee piece of the house here and some pieces here that aren't adjacent to our neighbor that. I don't think in totality cause any concern or impact on his property. It It's really the porch. Um, it's the first I've sort of heard that the windows on this side are of concern. But if I look at their property in the back lot line here, that's the same condition here that these windows on the back of his house overlook this person's backyard. So I can't get rid of an overlook on a person's backyard, especially on a corner lot. It's going to go to one of the houses or both of the houses. We've tried to make it fair to each of them. So it actually goes diagonally to create a triangular shaped backyard, which is not ideal. The suggestion was made, can we build within that green thing? I guess, yeah, we can. It might be a pretty bizarre house, but, uh, but from planning's perspective, if I built something within that, I'm going to have the side of my house facing the street. And that's not something that meets the intent of the urban design guidelines. So that's why we've tried to make sure that the face of our house, by turning it this way, is similar to this house and it faces the street. Our original interpretation was that this whole thing was the front lot line and this was the back lot line at a point. Mississauga interprets that way. Ophel interprets it a little bit differently. But most importantly to us, is the porch is there. Yes, it's 1.2 or 1.4 meters from the side lot line. The privacy impacts can definitely be dealt with through that screening. Um, but my neighbors have to have the right to have some sort of reasonable, or my client has to have some sort of right to have some sort of reasonable backyard in here. And we think that what's been proposed is actually an appropriate balance between the two neighbors on either side. Yes, there is a porch on his side, uh, but it is, literally at grade level because this lot is almost totally flat from front to back so it's not going to be more than a foot above the grade a fence and landscape screening is going to more than adequately compensate for that and if i took the whole house and rotated as had been suggest suggested in our discussions with them it does effectively take that porch and it's going to move it further back this way and my argument would be it's going to be even closer to the pool Actually, I've tried to keep it as far away from the pool as possible because my clients want some privacy in their backyard as much as they want some in theirs and as much as the people on these lots are looking for some in theirs as well. So so I th it's been a difficult site. I think we've done a, an appropriate job and I thank planning for the time that they've put into it. Could I do something that's going to satisfy every neighbor on the street? Obviously, that's not been the case, but I will clarify that uh, I think the note said, or the, the past individual had said that none of these addresses of support were on Baldwin. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six of them are on Baldwin. So that's not accurate. So six of the nine are all properties on Baldwin. So they do drive by the site all the time. So anyway, that with that, uh, Madam Chair and members, uh, I leave it to you. I think we meet the four tests. The planning certainly says we meet the four tests and we are happy to add that condition to our application, even though it's not 100% necessary. We're happy to do that. We're certainly prepared to meet with the neighbors and discuss the variety. We think black cedars are the right thing to do because they're a very dense hedge and you can control the height and not kill the, the tree. So we've used them very effectively in other properties. So with that, I will, uh, I've used up my time. So back to the, the, the chair and the committee. So Thank you. Uh, Mr. Talowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Madam Chair, I have a couple of questions for Mr. Hicks. Yes. Two parts of your presentation I find troubling. Uh, January 25th, you committed to meet with the neighbor. The chair asked you and named the neighbor by name, and you said you would. And I think 
especially in an era now where a neighbor does not have an appeal right, we need to pay more respect to the neighbors when they have concerns. You didn't reach out to the neighbor, you refiled the application and you reached out to them the day before when you had no opportunity or willingness to make any changes. How does that live up to the commitment that you made to this committee? I will comment on that. And that was raised by the, by the, the neighbors next door. As I said, there's, there's three people involved with this. It wasn't myself. There's a builder who represents the client and there's the client themselves. There's one some, applicant, there, Mr. Hicks. I know, but there was some miscommunication between those three, pe three people. I was not the one dealing with all the other neighbors on the street. They were dealing with the other neighbors on the street. My apologies, but I have been out of town for five weeks of that period. So it, uh, we did read their, their comments have not changed particularly. We were addressing what we thought we could by moving the driveway, which I thought had an even a greater impact. So I was surprised that they were still concerned, but it was I, am I at fault for not personally going to see them? Yes, I guess I am, but uh, um, I have to give you my apology on that. I wasn't in town, it wasn't possible for me to see them. I've been south for five or six weeks. So when you realized that that error had happened, why did you not choose to seek a deferral and make good with your commitment? You clearly chose to move forward. Uh, because, well, we did still meet with them and they, they suggested yesterday that they did not have that many concerns specifically other than with the orientation. And my position on that remains the same that the piece that gives them the greatest concern is not something I'm asking for a variance for. So. And secondly, with respect to the missing variants, um, yes, the town has identified that your plan that you're asking to have approved tonight doesn't comply with the bylaw. And I, in your presentation, you said essentially, I disagree. I need a variance approve it anyway. Um, I, I'm not sure how I can do that in all good conscience when you're being told you need another variance because I do not believe we do need another variance. The driveway exists where it sits right now. And I'll take that up with the town solicitor, but I, is my opinion, I do not need that variance. I feel quite very strongly about that, 100% about that. And if that does come back, it doesn't impact the design of the house. It just impacts where the driveway is located. If I, if I was to meet their requirement, I'm gonna be seeking a request to remove a street tree, which they're not gonna to provide to me. But that will be my issue I have to deal with if I have to come back before this committee to seek a driveway. But I can design a driveway that meets their bylaw requirement. It's not shown on that plan, but I do not need a variance for the driveway because I can provide a driveway that meets that requirement without requiring a variance. Okay, thank you. Um, Madam Chair, perhaps we could get staff to provide their opinion on this matter. Sure. Thank you. Through you, Madam Chairman, I'll do my best to respond to that issue. Um, it's not all that. In, so, to Mr. Hicks's point on the 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 the, the requirement that that it not be met, I think he's he's in essence calling it a legal non-conforming situation that it exists in that location and that it's not needed. That's my interpretation of what Mr. Hicks is saying. Um, I'm not going to pass judgment on that. I haven't dove into uh, this particular matter other than the commentary that had been provided by zoning staff to planning. We've embedded that into uh, our comments. They're the keepers of the, the zoning bylaw, so I would assume that's a correct interpretation of that. Um, in the past where there have been variances that have been missed, uh, applications have been deferred. So I don't know why this would be any different to deal with that. Um, again, to Mr. Hicks's point, if he could, um, it's not dealing with the built form of the uh, of, of the application, and that he can propose an alternate location. I don't know where that location uh, would be. We would have assessed that uh, if he was proposing a different location. Uh, if it was impacting street trees, then uh, the appropriate staff would have commented on that. Um, so I don't know the the full parameters of the issues at play with moving that driveway. So. I would err on the side of caution and saying, you know, as we deal with other applications, that the application be deferred. Okay. 
Um, Mr. Talski, does that satisfy your question? Okay. Any other questions or items of clarification from the committee members? Okay. Um, Mr. Hicks, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you to um, take a motion um, because Mr. McConnell did float it out there that um, you should have, is that something that you wish to do or you would like to proceed at this time? I am, I am satisfied that I can design a driveway that meets the bylaw requirement. I will not need that variance. So I would, Very I would well. rather proceed so and my, my client does not want to go through another deferral, so. Okay. Uh, um, having said that, we're ready to take the matter into committee and who would like to move a motion? Go ahead, Mr. Harcastle. Thank you, Madam Chair. I continue to have problems with my unmute tonight. Um, well, I guess uh, uh, um, I, I will just uh, come out and say that I'm not prepared. I think that there are enough challenges on the table here with respect to um, the impacts on the abutting property owner with respect to um, questions around the um, unaddressed or unresolved um, 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 minor variance for the driveway um, <clears throat> that I'm not, I'm not at this point in time prepared to support this application advancing. So um, in light of Mr. Hicks comments, I'll, I, I would be prepared to put forward a motion to refuse the application on the grounds that, uh, um, that it does not conform to the four tests of the act. And I'll, I'll leave it at that. Okay, thank you, Mr. Harcastle. Action on this recommendation. Okay, Mr. Talowski, go ahead, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I fully support Mr. Hardcastle. The applicant had three opportunities to request a deferral. When they found out they hadn't spoken to the neighbor, when they found out they needed another variance, and when you very clearly said tonight, this is a time to seek a deferral. They chose not to on all those occasions. Okay. Okay. And before us is to deny the application, all those in support. Okay. All those opposed, uh, all the application has been denied, none opposed. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. Thank you, Mr. Hicks. Have a good evening. Thank you. Okay, um, application CAV 153-2022. Uh, deferred from October the 4th of 2022 at 1235 Ingledean Drive. Again, it's CAV 153 of 2022, deferred from October the 4th of 2022 at 1235 Ingledean Drive. I have um, eight uh, emails of opposition from a Mr. Jillian Spalter, a Neil Ahmed, and a Gay Ahmed. Helen Thomas, Peter L. Stevens, Ron, Mo- Ron Moore, Irene Richards, Elizabeth and John Thompson, Barb Campbell, and I have a request to attend by a Wendy Galley. Who is the agent for this application? If you are interested in speaking to this application, please call 905-815. 6095. Staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instructions to join. Good evening. 
Good evening. Good evening. Yes. Hello again, Mr. Rebo. Okay. Nice I have you. a different name on 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 this one. I have a uh, Melissa Mello. Oh, as she's the one agent. of our uh, staff members, and she's okay. uh, project leads. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Rebo. Okay. So good evening, council members. Um, I will do my best to uh, run through this report. I will ask that while I'm reading through this report, if the president uh, um, tech support can. Scroll down to the very last page, page nine, uh, and highlight the illustration. Okay, so. <clears throat> okay. So Gasford Design Group has been retained by Renato Green uh, Malaka, the owner, uh, sorry, the landowners. Oh my gosh, it's late. The landowners to seek approval for minor variance application to facilitate a building addition to an existing single attached dwelling located at 1235 uh, Engledine Drive in Oakville, Ontario. The variance being requested is intended to allow for the reduced front yard setback. As for design group has worked closely with the Town of Oakville Planning Department to ensure that the total number of variances being requested are minimized and that any variances being requested can support, uh, be supported by staff and the committee. The following report provides a summary of the property's characteristics an overview of the planning rationale to support the request of variances uh, through the four tests. Site description, the subject property is located, um, again, 1235 Hill Drive in Oakville, Ontario. The subject lands are an irregular sh uh, irregularly shaped rectangular lot with approximately 19.2 meters of frontage on Ingledean Drive and a lot depth of approximately 37.8 meters, as shown in the figure below, uh, well, previously. Uh, the land use that immediate surrounds the site are are as follows. To the north, existing single detached dwellings in natural area. South, existing medium density residential. East, existing low and medium density residential dwellings and industrial lands adjacent to Highway 403 and QEW overpass. In the west, existing single detached dwelling. Proposed variances, the proposed variances to the application. I'm going to skip through this for the sake of time briefly. Um, the four tests. The following sections demonstrate how the proposed minor meets the requirements of four tests, minor and are minor uh, in nature and uh, uh, as a minor variance. Maintains the intent and purpose uh, of the official plan. The subject property is designated in low density residential as for schedule one, central land use in the Oakville official plan. Uh, the general residential policies of the official plan include some of the following objectives. Maintain, protect, and enhance the character of the existing residential areas. Promote housing uh, initiatives and facilitate revitalized compact urban form and increased uh, variety of housing and alternatives. Encourage the conservation and rehabilitation of older housing stock in order to maintain the stability and character of the existing stable residential communities. A front yard setback variance is being requested to facilitate an addition to the existing dwelling. This variance maintains the general intent and purpose of the official plan. It will help facilitate the retention and rehabilitation of the existing single detached dwelling on the property while providing gentle intensification that is in keeping with the overall character of the neighborhood and the requested variance is considered to provide an overall enhancement to the community, while proposing a built form that fits the uh, community scale. The requested variances are considered to maintain the intent of the official plan and represent good planning. The subject property is designated RL7, residential low, as per the town of Oakville. The minor variance is being requested to permit a front yard building setback of 9.33 me uh, meters, whereas the zoning bylaw requires a front building setback of 15.6 meters. The front yard setback is a setback which legally existed prior to 2014, less one meter. Based on the measurement from the lot line, the current structure of the current dwelling is set back from the property line 16.6 .6 meters. As per the zoning definition, in effect, setback would be 15.6. A variance seeking relief from the setback by approximately 6.27 meters is being requested. I'll explain how that's minor in nature in a bit. For a total front yard setback of 9.33 meters. It is also no, uh, worth noting that the parent RL7 zone permits a front yard setback of 7.5 meters. Based on review of the surrounding properties, and we've done, uh, we've got some statistics which I'll point out at the end. There are several instances of single detached dwellings within the neighborhood with building setbacks that range from seven to nine meters. This includes the property direct next door, 1231 Ingle Deep Drive, which has a front yard setback of approximately 8.8 .8 meters to the front of the lot line. 
The proposed variance requesting a front yard setback of 933 meters is compatible with the existing neighborhood given the site context. And I want to highlight that. Um, we have uh, an unusual lot compared to the rest of the neighborhood. Uh, attention, uh, attention has also been paid to the design of the second story addition, which provides a second story step back. The front yard setback is 9.33 meters, so there is a less of visual impact from the street. The architectural features of the house have been carefully considered based on site condition. It's also worth noting that the site plan submitted to support the minor variance application has been discussed with the town of Oakville planning staff. Several changes have been made so the planning complies with all zoning requirements under the RL7 zoning designation. Based on this, the requested variances are considered to be ma maintain the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw. Desirable for the appropriate development of land, the proposed building addition is consistent and compatible with other single detached dwellings on the adjacent lands in the surrounding area. The redevelopment of the property resulted in uh, conservation and rehabilitation of the existing building stock and is in keeping with the character of the neighborhood. I need to, I need to stress that. It's also important to note the Gaspar Design Group has worked closely with the town of Oakville to ensure that every effort has been made to respect the RL7 zoning designation. This includes compliance with all of the zoning regulations, including building height, lot coverage, interior, side yard setbacks. We even uh, redesigned to omit a side yard setback of a pinch point because of the um, angled lot line. The new single detached dwelling will appropriately fit in the existing community while adding value through the gentle intens intensification of subject property. The proposed variance will not result in a monster home that is out of character in the area. Instead, renovation involves an 180 square meter addition to the existing dwelling with an addition of two car garage, converted patio and deck. This level of gentle intensification within the existing residential neighborhood is encouraged by the town's livable Oakville official plan as desirable and appropriate for the uh, development of the land. Minor nature. Parents is requesting 6.27 meter increase of the front yard setback. It can be considered minor nature. I'll try to explain now. As previously mentioned, the proposed setback is consistent with the adjacent dwellings in the neighborhood and also meets the requirements of the R7 parent zoning bylaw uh, of 7.5 meters. The front yard setback of 933 meters is being maintained while respecting all other zoning bylaw regulations contained in the RL7 zone. The requested variance is not considered to impact the built form of massing or any other adjacent properties. Careful attention has been paid to the design of the building addition so that 9.33 meters setback is not, consist is not consistent across the entire frontage of the property where uh, 9.33 meters setback is present. There is um, no second story addition. The second story addition is set back an additional 3.3 meters from the 9.33 meter front yard setback. So that minimum 12.63 meter setback exists for any second story portion of the dwelling. Additionally, a majority of the dwelling includes a front porch. The setback additional 5.97 meters from the 933 meter setback. This results in a setback of approximately 15.3 meters for more than half of the width of the dwelling. Given some of the site specific constraints um, or considerations, the variances are considered minor in nature and represent good planning. Um, I I just want to end with the statistics that um, I can present. So we've surveyed the properties fronting Ingledy, uh, all of them. And we have a combined average front yard setback of 9.7 meters. We are proposing 0 0.4 meters less than the average along Ingledy. Um, I need to note, uh, sorry, if I have time, I've got points um, uh, that, that will address uh, letters of opposition, but I would like to wrap up my presentation uh, addressing some of the staff comments. At the first deferral, we reached out to speak with the planner to try and understand what it would take to gain their support. However, ended the conversation with very little feedback. However, we were able to revise the proposal to eliminate a variance for, for a side yard setback altogether. There are a total of nine properties with a similar footprint, uh, um, 1278 with the garage door on the front elevation and 1272 the same as we are proposing with the garage door on the side elevation and windows on the front elevation to fit with the other properties with living space in the front projection. The intention, the intention of the design is and consideration was maximize the rear sight lines and have as little impact on the existing livable dwelling footprint as possible, and thus the reason for projecting forward. As previously mentioned, there are several other L-shaped dwellings, footprint that is, and due to the fact that there are already some existing front garage projections, what we are proposing is in fact representing the existing streetscape. The second story projection was necessary to accommodate the owner's growing family while respecting the impact of massing 
keeping it modest in size. The existing dwelling on the subject site is also pushed back pretty far on the inside bend of the street. And although our proposal is challenging to comply with the required front yard setback of the existing less one meter, this is not in keeping with the average of the neighborhood. We are proposing 0 0.4 meters less than the average along Ingledean. Although the planner has co uh, commented on a provided render, please note that the render provided and on screen uh, uh, in our letter is a true representation of what we are proposing is very suitable in the, to the neighborhood and no less desirable than the adjacent neighbor's project, uh, uh, pro property. Um, you can see that we uh, don't project any further closer to the uh, street or front yard setback than the neighbor does uh, directly adjacent, excuse me, to us. Uh, design, uh, design guidelines 323 three setback. We believe that this that the subject site as an instance where the established front yard setback can be slightly varied due to specific site constraints. We think that this is applicable to our site compared to the rest of the streetscape. 326 garages and accessory structures. We believe that the windows on the front wall along with the covered porch are aesthetic appealing elements that draw less attention to the proposed uh, garage projection. Conservation is satisfied with the proposal and due to the irregular shaped lot, and rear constraints is not more desirable for the uh, to build further back than as we have proposed in front, especially with disproportionate uh, from um, from yard in comparison to the majority of the properties along Ingledean. And I will end with that, and that we do believe we meet the four tests. Although, um, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll open it to any questions. I know that there's a number of letters of opposition. I have prepared uh, responses to the majority of those, and um, and uh, I suppose I'll let them speak first. Please don't okay, tell me. I'm thank you. <laughs> Sorry. No, I was saying. I hope I wasn't on mute. <laughs> no, you were not on mute. We heard you loud and clear. Um, Let's start with questions uh, to Mr. Um, Rebo first. Oh, well, I have one uh, CH permit. Uh, you are aware that you're going to need that, right? Correct. Okay. And, um, and we believe we can satisfy any concerns that they might have. Okay. Um, quest other questions of Mr. Uh, Ribo at this time? Okay, I see none. Has anyone called in for this application? Um, and would like, like to, to address the committee? If you can please raise your hand so I can move you into the meeting if you'd like to speak. Yes, there, there will be people to move in, so just bear with okay, me. Okay, very well. Given that uh, you had so many letters of opposition, have you reached out to the neighbors to canvas um, what their thoughts are, what their concerns are, and see if you can mitigate that in working with the town? I understand that you spoke to the town and you didn't get much direction, but um, did you do so before or after you submitted your application? Sorry, did I do so what before? To reach to, out to the town for direction. So we reached out to the town after the last hearing was deferred and we spoke with the planner that provided the original comments. And we tried to work with her and, and but unfortunately got very little feedback on how to rectify um, the issues of this particular lot and how we might propose something that's suitable again, but appropriate. Uh, my, the, my understanding is that the owners did reach out to some of the neighbors. Um, they were also made aware that a number of neighbors have pushed back on other applications as well. And um, uh, I, I don't know, I, I personally didn't, but again, my understanding is that the owners did try and reach out to some of the neighbors that uh, did oppose previously. And, and I do believe, again, I, I've, I've got comments to 
um, respond to some of the concerns of the, the neighbors um, that I think are very appropriate. I just thought I would take an opportunity to uh, let them speak if they wanted to first, and I can address those um, uh, again as I wrap up maybe. Okay, very well. Who do we have first? There's Helen Thompson. Sorry, I lost you for a second. Helen Thompson. Okay. okay. Go ahead, Miss Thompson. I have two sets of Thompson. I have an Elizabeth and John Thompson, and I have a Helen Thompson. Okay. Go ahead, Miss Helen Thompson. Thank you. Um, if you'd be kind enough to turn your camera uh, on. I, absolutely. Thank you. There. Um, um, go ahead. I am, um, my name is Helen Thompson and I reside at uh, 1239 Ingle Dean Drive. So I am the next door neighbor. And okay. at no point have these owners approached me to discuss anything about the project. In fact, shortly before the first application came to light, uh, what they did was approach me to mention that they were interested in potentially installing a chain link fence between the properties, which would require the removal of what was left of our very mature 25 foot high cedar hedge that, uh, that went right across the backyard. And there was one very large uh, full mature cedar just at the front between the two properties, which they said they wanted to remove as well. I was not receptive to the idea, but, and suggested that maybe some alternative of a mix of cedars and fence might possibly address their demands. But at no point did they mention they were thinking of demolishing the existing house and, and um, putting in a whole new construction. So when the sign appeared, as far as I know, no neighbors were aware of it. Uh, we received the uh, notification basically by seeing the sign on their lawn. Uh, for whatever reason, the letters that were sent to those who lived within 600 meters didn't arrive uh, as, you know, quite as quickly as they might have done. So we scrambled at short notice. Following that, uh, there was no discussion, certainly with me or any other neighbors I'm aware of, um, before this uh, application was brought back before you. Uh, we've had exactly 10 days to, to try to read it through, find that the differences are very, very minimal at best. Uh, otherwise, other than removing a matter of inches here and there, it's basically the same project other than that there would now be the installation of a swimming pool plus more hardscaping in the backyard right beside the ravine. At no point has there been any discussion about the... Um, the fact that the plan involves considerably more than just what's being referred to in the in the, the minor variances or the variances I, I don't want to call them minor uh, the if approved the next stage would be to build directly into a hazard zone an erosion hazard zone that has been designated as such between uh, 1239 and 1235 which would bring the roof line within two feet of the, the property line, which is obviously very close. Uh, and it will, um, you know, I, I'm not sure what that does if you dig into an, an, an actual erosion hazard zone that uh, could result in property damage, could result in foundation cracks, it could result in water leakage. There's why the conservation no Halton is there so that they can assess these issues. So I absolutely agree with you. There's a lot of things to be mitigated about that site and the erosion portion yes. should and be th dealt with. And thank you for that because obviously as a homeowner, this is something that's very concerning. Um, you know, as a homeowner for the last 30 years, uh, it would seem a shame to have my home compromised and, and possibly damaged irreparably because of uh, any careless construction. Now, in terms of the variances themselves, and I may be using up too much of my time here, uh, the, the, uh, the negative impact 
to the uh, to the two certainly to the adjacent bungalows the bungalow across the street the street itself can't be underestimated i would lose frankly, if the construction went ahead, I would lose all the natural sunlight in the one south facing window of my bungalow. But the house to the south, if that front projection were put out in place as, as uh, indicated, would lose their whole view of the street. They'd be sitting in their living room, looking out at the back of a, a garage. Um, not really a very appealing sight for people that have lived there for almost 40 years. And that drawing that we were uh, shown tonight is not to scale. Uh, it doesn't match the footprint that's shown on the actual uh, um, plan drawings. So I'm, I'm a little bit shocked that it's been presented in that way. It, it to me, seems beyond inappropriate. If it were as small as, as it appears from that rendering, um, it would be quite, it wouldn't. Uh, you know, it might not be quite the same situation, but obviously that's not the case. Um, is that a macaw in the background? I'm sorry it is. Uh, yeah. He's upset too. Okay. <laughs> the whole family is a little bit upset. <laughs> I feel his pain right now. <laughs> yes. So uh, thank you for listening to me. Is there anything, I did write a letter. Is there anything in my letter? I tried to number the paragraphs to make it easier oh, for no, reference. We've, we've, we've received your submission. It was very thorough. We, we appreciate you coming and speaking and taking your time as well to speak to us. And um, once everyone has had the chance to speak, um, the way this goes is we have questions for you and then others uh, can speak. And then Mr. Revo can uh, co comment on everyone else's comments. In the meantime, what I can do is ask Mr. Talowski and Mr. Harkas and Mr. Flemington if there are any questions of Ms. Thompson and items of clarification that you'd like to ask of her. Um, we let the next speaker uh, address the committee. Thank okay, you, Madam Chair. I see, I see none. So thank you for your submission. You. Uh, the only reason I asked about this macabre was because the my dog does the same thing at the door. <laughs> um, well, okay. I, I understand. Yeah. Um, Madam Secretary, Treasurer, um, is there anyone else who's uh, standing in, in wait to speak to the committee members? And I will repeat it again, if, if any of the um, neighbors or interested parties uh, would like to speak to this application, please call 905-815-6095. Uh, uh, or if you're already in the panel, please just raise your hand and the secretary treasurer will allow you to, um, will unmute you and allow you to speak. I'm just gonna stand up for a second because I'm feeling this pain in my leg. I mean, no disrespect. <laughs> while you uh, call in the next person. Okay, there's someone, no one has raised their hand, but there is a, somebody who has phoned in and I don't know whether they have the capability of raising their hand or not. So I wanna give them the opportunity. Um, I'm going to move them into the meeting and if they don't want to speak, I can certainly remove them from the meeting, but I don't want them to miss their opportunity to have something to say if they so choose. So I'm just gonna move a phone number in. I, I don't know who it is, or even if they're for sure, this yeah. application. So just one yes. moment. That's fine. No, it's, it's not even gonna let me move, move them in. Uh, well, can you, you uh, it, they speak, speak to, to them, them and give them direction, direction to I, join I the meeting speak. in a different way? Um, I don't know whether, um, did, if they called in through the 905-815 number, then um, they would go directly um, into the meeting. Okay, I'll give you a couple of minutes to figure that out, Mr. Well, Rebo, they, they would have to be they would have to be listening to us now and to call okay. into the 905-815 number that you've been repeating for them to call in. And then when they call in, um, they're going to appear directly into the meeting because I'm unable to move someone on the phone um, into the meeting. And perhaps they are just listening. 
um, and that's fine. I Again, I, I just don't want them to lose their opportunity, but they're showing as an attendee. Um, so I, I'm going to try. Uh, just one moment, okay? Sure. Uh, Mr. Rivo, did you have, uh, you wanted to reply to some of these comments while we're waiting? I was just going to say a little unconventional and it might just be our client listening in. I, I don't know. I, I know they planned on listening in. I'll allow um, it given the fact that we are having technical difficulties. Right. So let me address Ms. Thompson's uh, comments first. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say if we could bring it up again, the render that she brought up, I'm glad to see that she agrees that as illustrated would be of little um, Concern. This is a true representation of what we're proposing. Uh, I can assure you that um, if there's any way that uh, I could um, explain that, uh, I, I'm not entirely sure regarding scale. If you look at the site plan, you, you will see that in relationship to the existing facade and the existing tree to remain in the middle of the property there, the garage projects about halfway through. You can also note that it doesn't project any further than the neighbor's projection. Again, you can see if you carry the, you know, follow the lines across, that that is consistent as well. Um, uh, heights and massing is very appropriately scaled. Uh, again, this illustrates how our, our subject sites is further back than the majority of the sites on the site, uh, on, the, uh, on Engledine. Um, regarding her comments about and, and I mean this with all due respect, regarding her comments on sight lines, uh, I believe they're a bit irrelevant in the sense that the existing foliage is very overgrown on her property, currently screening the existing sight lines. And on the side of the proposed bill, we are not asking for any forward projections and comply with the bylaws. Um, again, no side yard setbacks on that side whatsoever. And as noted, any any concerns with erosion hazards or whatnot, we're going to have to work with conservation and DESP as well. Significant efforts are made to maintain as many trees as possible, as indicated in the Arborist Report, and if Forestry does not agree, then we would need to continue to negotiate with them to obtain approvals. Comments made about clear-cutting all or most of the trees is incorrect. We're proposing that the mature trees 3, Don Redwood, and 4, Noro Maple, are to be preserved as uh, stated in the Arborist Report. And um, although she didn't bring it up now, it, it is in our letter, an argument about a semicircular driveway is an incorrect representation of the proposed and we are maintaining the existing site access. So those are my comments in response to Ms. Thompson's concern. Okay, thank you for that. If uh, staff can bring us back to the panel. Uh, Ms. McRae, have you been able to ascertain whether that- Yep, they should be in the meeting. There we go. Okay. I, I just, and so if you can please get their name and, and their address for the record, that would okay. be great. Who, who is online right now? Hello? You have to unmute yourself, correct? I see you muted. Is there a way for them to be unmuted? Because they're on the phone. Ms. McRae? But it, it's just like any other call-in. Um, uh, I see a green... Uh, uh, <clears throat> I mean, unless I'm looking at the wrong person. Okay, there's a Richard Dawson that's in my panel. Is that person for this application or another? Uh, he might have been... I. I didn't, he should still be in as an attendee. I don't believe he raised his hand. Oh, now Mr. he has. Mr. Dawson, your hand is raised. Are you, Are you here, here for Ingledean Drive? Do you hear me? I see your hand. I see you're unmuted. Yeah, he's showing he here and me. he's showing here and as an attendee. So I, I don't know. I see, I see a green phone. phone. But, but it, that, that one is muted. muted. And then I have a Richard Dawson that has his hand up and unmuted, but I can't hear anything. I mean, we do have comforts of, uh, I can't hear you. of virtual meetings, but this is one of the pains of also virtual meetings. So we kind of have uh, to contend with both the good and the bad. 
I apologize. I didn't realize that my face was so close to the... <laughs> okay. I, uh, I don't know what to do here. Well, okay, now Mr. Dowson, Dowson should be able to speak. Hello? Hello? Hello. We hear you now. Oh, you can hear me now. Sorry, there I don't know well. what was happening there. I was trying all the different audio settings. I, I'm not here for this application. Sorry, I, I'm Okay. Uh, well, it's good. At least we're not missing anyone. So yeah. sit tight. Are you here for the next one, the Carding Mill Trail? That's right. Yes. Okay. Sit tight. We'll, we'll get to you shortly. Thank you. So it doesn't appear that there's anyone in here. Uh, do, you see, do you see the phone number that I see? It starts with 1905 and then a few stars and ends with 230. Is that the one that has just called in, Ms. McRae? Um, that's the person that's in as an attendee. So, okay, now there's another caller that's come in, Julie, who just phoned in. She just got invited to join the meeting. I don't know if it's the same person, it's the same phone number, I don't know. Um, but there now is a Julie that um, should be able to speak. Miss Julie, Hello. do you hear us? Yes. Um, okay. It's Jillian Salter. Okay, welcome, Miss Jillian. Are you here for Ingledean Drive? Yes, I am. Okay, will you kindly uh, uh, give me your name, address, uh, for the record? No. I, I have it, I, I have it, because she did write in. Um, okay. But I just want to confirm, um, so does your phone number end in the 230? No. No? Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm Jillian, Jillian Salter, Salter 1267. No, there's, there's someone else on a phone with no name or whatever, and I just wanted to make sure so you haven't called in already, so that, that's fine. You can, the, the chair will address you. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Jillian. Uh, if you have a oh. camera, are you on a phone or are you on your computer? No, she, but I'm, I'm on a phone, but I'm uh, no, I, I then it's to... fine. You're, we, we hear you loud and clear. Go ahead. Okay, great. Well, I'm just calling to say that I object, and I'm mostly concerned about the precedent this would set if this was allowed to pass as such. Um, I think they're not minor variances. Um, I think about the massing on the street, the trees that would be removed, have to be removed, um, and just generally the precedent this would set if it was allowed to proceed. Okay, is that it? Thank you for your submission, if, if that's all you have. Does anyone have any questions of Ms. Jillian Salter at this time? Okay, I see none. Very well, Th thank you for calling in and thank you for your submission. Thank you. And you can go ahead and um, mute yourself or... Um, and how do I mute yourself? I think that, Ms. McCray, do you mute them or do you? No, I, I don't have access to their phone. Okay, so then just sit tight, Ms. Jillian, you can hear the rest of the presentation. Um, Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Have you figured out that last number before we move? No, uh, I, I, don't, um, I don't know who it is. Um, and I guess they haven't called in to the 905. Okay, and I think we've given ample uh, time for people to call in and make an effort. Um, um, Mr. Talowski, Mr. Flemington, Mr. Hardcastle, do you have any uh, further questions of Mr. Ribot? I see none. Mr. Ribot, I, I will allow you a couple of, uh, of minutes after, uh, uh, but please make it brief in terms of your responses to uh, Jillian Salter had to say. I, I'll do my best. So, sort of two main points, precedence and trees. So I've got some notes on that. Trees, regarding the trees, it was the owner's intent to preserve as many trees as possible, and even without the proposed development, there are a couple of trees that are suspiciously close to the existing dwelling 
that are planned to be removed regardless of today's decision. Of course, the owner will be working with forestry requirements. Um, uh, precedence was brought up. And if these variances were to be approved, however, I would argue that one, everyone knows that each application is to be determined on its own merits and the particular lot is at, at a disadvantage compared to the rest of the street. And this would be a situation where in this instance, we are prevented from what is already existing in the neighborhood. Again, this is apparent in the provided render. So, um, uh, that's all. I, I, yeah, I'll speak to those two points and leave it at that. Okay, very well. Um, let's take the matter into committee. Who would like to move a motion? Go ahead, Mr. Talowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Madam Chair, unfortunately, I, I find myself coming across quite negative tonight, but um, I, I believe the intent of the garage projection and the front yard bylaw provisions are to prevent exactly what this application is proposing. I can't find that this meets the intent of the zoning bylaw. I don't believe the variances are minor, nor do I believe it's creating a desirable situation. Um, I would note that um, eight neighbors would agree with that position. Um, and uh, with that, Madam Chair, I'm going to move that the application be denied. Very well. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? Okay. Um, all, the, all those in support of the application being denied? Okay. The application has been denied and none opposed. Thank you, Mr. Ribo. I, I, I will I will make a comment in case you do come before us again. I, I do truly recommend that you speak to your neighbors as often as possible and work with them as well as uh, town staff to present the best possible application so that you're not met with such opposition. I've noted, and thank you for your time this evening, Council, and uh, have a good night. We can probably see you again soon. Very well. Take care. Good night. Okay. Uh, application CAV1, no, uh, CAV001 of 2023, deferred from February the 8th of 2023 at 3 Four zero Carding Mill Trail. Again, it's CAV001 of 2023, deferred from February the 8th of 2023 at 3240 Carding Mill Trail. Uh, we have emails of opposition from uh, Vishal Nayi and Ion and Ian Dotita. Do Sorry, I'm I, it's very late. <laughs> I'm sure I'm making on this one, I apologize. Uh, Cornelia Oleksayek and a Prashant Gruav. I know I didn't do any of them justice and I apologize once again. But those are the four letters of uh, opposition that we have. We have the uh, agent as Catherine McEwen. Okay, if anybody can raise their hand if they'd like to be moved into the meeting. This is the last item of our agenda. Um, okay, I've moved Ms. McEwen into the meeting. Very well. And we do have a Mr. Uh, Dawson on hold as well for this application. If he's still there, Richard. I don't know if he's hung up or not. But... No, he's here, but after the presentation, I'll move him into the meeting. Okay, okay, very well. well. Good evening, Ms. McEwen. Good evening. Uh, my name is Catherine McEwen from Corsair Garden Planning here on behalf of Madame. Actually, Mr. Dowson is from Madame. Um, so I'm not sure that he needs to be moved into the meeting. I think he's just in attendance should there be any questions. Um, as mentioned, our application we deferred from the February 8th meeting based on new comments from zoning. Um, so maybe next slide, please. 
The subject lands are located on the north side of North Park Boulevard, west side of Cardinal Trail, east side of Posterior Way, south of Ironside Drive, within the preserved neighborhood. Next slide, please. These lands were zoned and draft approved back in 2016. Um, the intersection of North Park and Cardinal Mill is identified as an activity node in the secondary plan. Next slide, please. Block 299, which is on the east side of Cardinal Mill, was site plan approved last year. Um, a five story mixed use building and five story apartment building are currently under construction. There will be just over 6,500 square feet of commercial space in this mixed use building. Next slide, please. Block 300, which is known as 3240 Cardinal Mill, we're proposing 18 stacked townhouse dwellings and a five story mixed use building. The mixed use building will have just under 12,000 square feet of commercial space for a combined total of close to 18,000 square feet at this activity note. The area that's hatched in yellow, we're proposing to have ancillary residential uses separating the residentials from this rather than commercial space at this location. Next slide, please. Due to the wording of the bylaw, we're requesting a variance to permit dwelling units on the first story that are not separated from the wall facing a public street by a commercial unit and technically to permit ancillary residential uses on the first story that occupy a maximum of 100% of the length of this small portion of the main wall of the building oriented towards a public street. Next slide, please. The secondary plan requires that one mixed use or non-residential building be provided at the intersection of each activity node. The intent of the bylaw was to ensure sufficient commercial uses are provided at the activity node, mainly oriented along North Park and Carding Mill as identified in subsection D. Instead of providing up to 15% of ancillary residential uses on the Carding Mill and North Park uh, main walls, we've provided mostly all commercial on these walls and shifted the ancillary residential to Wisteria Way where we feel it's more compatible. Next slide, please. Um, this area of the building that fronts onto Wisteria Way is isolated from the rest of the commercial that's proposed and is located at the rear of development away from the intersections that will not experience the same level of acti activity as the other commercial uses and the size of this space at this end of the building is also not very viable for commercial uses. Um, we feel that it's more compatible to provide um, ancillary uses at this location versus along Carding Mill or North Park. Next slide please. This is a rendering of the building looking south on Carding Mill towards North Park where commercial uses are proposed. Next slide, please. And this is a rendering of the building looking north on Carding Mill at North Park where additional commercial space will be provided. Next slide, please. Um, as noted in the staff report, we've had the opportunity to work with staff and a garbage enclosure is no longer needed. Um, it was previously a comment from Urban Design. Garbage in and recycling will be fully stored within the mixed use building and will be brought up to the garbage pad once a week where it will be collected by the region. So it will only be on the garbage pad for a short amount of time, similar to other um, developments within Oakville. So, I believe this variance is no longer needed, but I know that planning is on the call as well. Next slide, please. Um, we're also requesting a technical variance to permit a minimum density of 22 residential units per net hectare for the stacked towns, whereas a minimum of 35 UPH is required. Because the property is technically one lot, 
um, the minimum floor space index and density is evaluated based on the entire lot size, which is 0 0.77 hectares. So the minimum floor space index for the mixed use building comes in at 1.56, which conforms. But when you calculate the density for the stacked based on the entire lot area, the density is 0.22 units per hectare. So a technical variance is required. Um, but the proposed stacked towns are permitted built form and meet the intent of the density requirements. Next slide, please. So the thicker dashed line on this figure um, delineates between block one and block three of the lands identified on special zoning figure 851 -1. So the only permitted building types in block three are commercial residential or live works, uh, townhouses and stacked townhouses. So in order to make efficient use of the underground garage, a small portion extends into what is identified as block three beyond the zone line. So therefore, a uh, variance is required to permit that. Um, we've received the comments and I, I hope I've addressed those. I believe that our variances meet the four tests. Um, that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Very well. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. McEwen. Um, are there any questions of Ms. McEwen at this time? Okay, I see none. Um, I actually have a, a question of planning. Um, Mr. McConnell, can you um, elaborate a little bit about, I, I understand that the garbage within an enclosed building uh, variant is no longer needed. And as Ms. McEwen spoke, that the garbage goes out to the pad that once once a week, right? Yes, that's so correct. So what happens with commercial spaces that have an overflow? They are to maintain the garbage within their space, similar to a residential home. And when I have a, an overflow of garbage, I leave it in my garage. Yeah, I think from a commercial perspective, um, it could come down to, to an enforcement matter if, it, if there was uh, an overflow of garbage and it was consistently being stored outside. Miss um, McEwen is right. She has worked with our urban design staff. Uh, the variance is no longer required on the basis that uh, only on garbage day would, would it be brought uh, to the exterior. Other than that, the garbage would be uh, stored exclusively within the building itself. Okay, I just needed that clarification, seeing as though that a lot of the letters of opposition uh, had that issue primarily with the neighbors. That, I mean, I guess that's the one that resonated the most with the neighbors. So it's good to have that information on hand in public viewing so that they can ref reference that for the future. So Very thank good. you for that. All right. Um, any other items of clarification or uh, questions? Okay, I see none. M Ms. McCray, has anyone called in and or requested to speak to this application? Uh, not at this time. Very well. Then um, given the time and the fact that we've had ample time for people to call in, uh, we'll take the matter into committee. Who would like to move a motion? Go ahead, Mr. Flemington. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, having uh, reviewed the uh, applicant's written uh, submission as well as uh, conducting my site visit and noting that the town staff report is in support of the application, I do agree with all of the uh, comments that are within the town's written staff report. Um, also taking into account that there was no uh, oral objections uh, to the presentation this evening. I do note, however, there were uh, four emails of opposition. Uh, I think that uh, in the presentation, some of those items were covered. Uh, and I find that the application as applied for is minor intent and meets the four tests of the Planning Act. So I would like to move a motion in support of the application with the following two conditions. Uh, the first one that the building be constructed in general accordance with the final approved site plan. 
to the satisfaction of the director of planning services. And the second one that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. Thank you. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? <clears throat> I see none. All those in support? Okay. The application has been approved. None opposed. Thank, Thank you, Ms. McEwen. Good night. Good night. Ms. McRae, you'll let us know when we're offline, please. Do we have minutes in adjournment yet? Oh. oh. It's uh, been a long. Yes, we do. It's, it's been a long night. I think I'm allowed to err once in a while. Um, yes, confirmation of minutes for March the 22nd. Mr. Harkassel, did I see a finger or a hand? No, you didn't? Oh, you did. Okay. You're still on mute, so I wasn't sure. Okay. You moved the minutes. I'll raise my finger, Madam Chair. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Hardcastle moves the minute. Okay. And motion to adjourn. I would take it myself, but I can't. Mr. Hardcastle. Motion to adjourn. We are adjourned at, yay, 9.55. We wouldn't need an, another motion to uh, extend. Uh...